yo, 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 yo. What's going on, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know what it is. This is Kevin from the Cold Progression Podcast. What's up, City Rocks? We're rocking and thrive. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is April 13th. Almost tax time, everybody. But instead of tax time, listen to this podcast because this one is freaking great. Yeah, I said that. Great. Why is it great? Because I can talk with the guys from the band Divide the Fall. If you want to know who Divide the Fall is, they're the bands. That's the shirt I'm wearing. Yes, I'm wearing their shirt right now for this podcast. They're out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm wearing my Vikings hat, but they're all Packer fans, so I feel right at home. (laughs) However, we go in depth with a couple of different things on this podcast for your listening enjoyments, including some of these crazy tour stories that take up like the first like 20 minutes of this podcast that are freaking hilarious. You're going to enjoy every bit of them. We also do talk a little bit about COVID situation in terms of vaccinations and how this is going to impact concert really go into this well we also talk about their brand new EP we talk about their song fake love and their writing style as well and I gotta tell you this is all fun as all hell so when it comes to by the fall are you guys ready I am now so let's go yeah well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast, thanks to our good friend, Mr. Joe Alfano and his Sirius X and Moctane fan page on Facebook. This band was featured as one of his bands of like, for like about two weeks. And when they jumped off of it, they said a thank you and gave everybody like a little promo code to pick up some merch. And I'm like, wait, a band I like is giving me a promo code. This is awesome. Then we got to talking with them a little bit and here they are on the podcast. And yes, I am wearing that shirt. I got on that, off that promo code right now so please welcome out of minneapolis minnesota where i went to college oh yeah so i know exactly what i'm talking about got the vikings head on even to prove it please welcome jake matt and ethan from the band divide the fall so guys welcome to court progression podcast thanks for having us man thanks so much for having us yeah how's everything going this day and age in um minneapolis minnesota uh, slow still you know just uh trying to stay as locked down as we can we all well matt works from home but jake and i both work uh you know in a coffee shop and can't uh can't stay home so we're trying to quarantine as much as we can but yeah it's i just, probably mentioned too so we're packer fans oh um, yeah I probably should have uh <laughs> put that out there uh, so first. No. i'll say so you guys are based in minnesota i know matt you're you're living in wisconsin you're from wisconsin and you guys are Packer fans, yet I'm all the way on the other side of the state in Milwaukee, surrounded by Packer fans, and I've got a purple hat on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we actually all grew up in Wisconsin uh, and moved out here at different points. And uh, yeah, we're all all Packers fans. I'll say this. If you guys start ripping on me for my Vikings fandom or anything like that, I'm just going to end up smiling because you guys are going to make me feel like I'm at home. <laughs> there you go. I, I mean, you, say- just gotta look at, you just got to look at division championships, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, we could get in a huge discussion about that, but I don't really want to jump in that because, of course, this ain't about <laughs> football. Things about are freaking. looking good for the Vikings 2021 season, though. Yeah. I'll say some of the, like, trades that you guys are making. Yeah, but we got Kirk Cousins as our quarterback still, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, is, there is that. <laughs> Always, I... I don't care. I'll always rip on Kirk Cousins as much as I want. He, people talk about, oh, he's such he's a good quarterback. It's just you look at the numbers. I'm like, yeah, but when you look at the numbers and then you actually watch him play. It's like I watched the Falcons game last year and people were telling me, oh, he did so great. He threw this many touchdowns. He had this great, this great satellite. I'm like, yeah, he had three interceptions. All three were in the first half. Like, come on. Were you, like, were you not watching the game? No, exactly. Huh. So I have some fun I'm with that. that we got Rodgers for one more year. Um, yeah, fingers I, crossed. <laughs> I thought I thought it was for sure now that he like resigned. Oh, I, I guess I haven't seen it. I I heard talk that he might retire, but we'll see. Uh, fingers crossed. They, I mean, they they said they haven't restru- restructured his contract anyway, so I think that has what two more years on it, maybe. Oh, maybe. I honestly have no idea. Yeah, well, if you're taking a look at the moves, I don't know they, like that, but well, if you take a look at the moves they made in free agency and just kind of like the re-signing of guys, all of them have like two-year deals on them. So it looks like they're like planning for that two-year window. And then after that, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. 
I'm just bringing that up. I'm already seeing the nerves kind of like wash over you guys. Yeah, I mean, we've we've been very fortunate for a very long time when it comes to quarterbacks. And, you know, if we can keep it going, great. But I'm not going to hold out hope that we're going to get another Favre or another Rodgers after this. Yeah. Oh, totally understandable. <laughs> no love for Jordan Love, I see. <laughs> I mean, like, if they can train him up and he comes out and he just blows up, great. But, yeah, I'm not going to put all my eggs in that basket. <laughs> Yeah, because you know it's it's very rare that it's. I mean, it's almost impossible that you're going to have three generational quarterbacks oh, yeah. and three all time yeah, grades right b- like back to back to back each other. Two of them is almost impossible, but there have been other times that it's happened. But I don't think it's ever happened where there's been three in a row. Yeah, no, yeah. it would be it would be incredible if they could, but I, yeah. <laughs> We'll see, I guess. We'll Yeah, we'll see. Alrighty, well, because this is, again, a music podcast, I want to make sure we get some kind of talk about music and not just talk <laughs> about the Vikings and the Packers because, honestly, we could probably go for a whole hour and a half, two hours on this subject. So, But, of course, Divide the Fall is the reason why we're here today, so I want to make sure we talk about that. So I'm going to ask you guys to answer me each three questions as an intro because it allows the listeners and the viewers to get to know you guys a little bit better Two questions, very simple, very easy, but it's that third question that I love to hear what the answer is, and it always kind of trips people up. So the first one is, what is your name? The second one is, when it comes to Divide the Fall, what do you do in the band? So pretty easy. Now the third one, I want to know a little fun fact or a fun story about yourself, but I want to know something that's going to make me laugh hysterically, something wacky that I could potentially fall out of my chair on. I've heard ones of bands chloroforming their members, taking them to a beach and burying them halfway in the sand to make it look like their legs were cut off. I've heard other ones where while on tour, some guys had to relieve themselves in a large cup because, you know, long trips on the road and they threw it out the window only for that cup to come back in through a back window and hit somebody else in the band full of, um, full of pee. So basically it was like a drive by pee. Oh my God. So if you guys can, if you guys can come up with something like that for each of you, my God, you guys are going to be my favorite. So they'll end up coming okay. up one, with one for me for sure. No, I've, I've got one that doesn't involve either of you. Um, I mean, we could talk about show stories and tour stories all day, but, uh, okay. So I'm Ethan. I am the vocalist in divide the fall. Um, so I remember we played a show in Janesville, Wisconsin, which is just outside Madison. And we were, I think, like the third band out of five that night. And we get done. We're just hanging out, you know, grabbing a couple of drinks, watching the other bands. And I'm over by the bar. And this guy starts talking to me. Pretty normal conversation. Like he was... He was like a little bit tipsy, but he wasn't plastered by any means. Like, like some people get at shows, like you could tell he had a few. And we're talking and we're talking about other bands that he likes and stuff. And mid sentence, like not, not even just like there was a pause. And then he said like, no, he stopped dead mid sentence, leans in and goes, Hey man, uh, you, you do blow. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> To like, which, didn't to which, even finish his thought. Yeah, like, like, like we, like if it was talking like this, it would be like if I went, middle of a sentence, just, oh yeah, the weather outside. Hey man, do you do blow? <laughs> so, so I'm like, yeah, no man, like, not really my thing. To which his response is to go, oh yeah, no, no, me, me neither. I've never, <laughs> never done this stuff. Wouldn't, wouldn't do it if it was offered to me. No, not a chance. Like, yeah, okay, buddy, I. Guarantee that's true. Oh, I easily guarantee that that's true. No one just, you know, if, if you come up with the idea of, hey, man, do you do blow mid-sentence without, like, any sort of, like, preconceived or, like, um, what's the word? Like, preparatory yeah, like, set, uh, conversation to get to that point. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, no, man, I don't do it. I don't do it. I, just was, I was just curious. No, no, yeah. no. You like, I, was, I was just wondering. Like, no, you weren't. You were going to ask if I had any. <laughs> you were going to yeah, – if I said yes, you're like, you're going to ask if I had any. And then probably if I said yes, you're going to try and coerce me into giving you some so you go to the bathroom, put it on top of a toilet seat, and snort it until you felt like Tony Montana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was – I mean, we – that's the one that comes to mind all the time when people are like, like what's one of the weirder things that's happened? Like, that was – that was a good one. 
I, I feel like I know what Jake is going to say for his story, and if he doesn't say it, then I'm going to tell the story anyway. Oh, I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, either one of you. Well, you already said Jake, so go ahead. You, go ahead. you can't think of any tour stories. Not even a single one. Crazy. Really? <laughs> okay. crazy comes Matt, to mind. Matt, how about you go and we'll give Jake a second to think here. <laughs> Alright, so I'm Matt. I play bass in Divide the Fall. Um, I also try to do backing vocals sometimes when needed. Um, he acts like he's not a good singer, but he is. I, yeah. uh, my funny story, well, so I'm kind of notoriously just a very loud snorer. Um, <laughs> so we... <laughs> We all like tour in a, in a van now. Thankfully, it used to be like we used to cram into a jeep, like a four passenger jeep. But yeah. now we at least have like a fifteen passenger van that we each get like our own seat, which is like our bunk, if you will. But uh, so yeah, I snore very loud. I probably have sleep apnea. I've never been tested. But... Don't know. It's not probably. <laughs> you have sleep apnea. It's never been confirmed by a doctor. <laughs> that doesn't matter. You stop breathing. <laughs> For long periods of time. Um, and also, uh, I get kissed by random biker women at bars in Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I'm also married. That's all I got. Uh, alrighty, so I'm just, the reason I'm laughing even so harder at that than I thought I was going to with the random biker women and the sleep apnea thing is because I've been told the same thing by people where... Like, if I'm up north with my family, of course, there's only a limited amount of room. So, it's like I usually have to share a room with my brother. And then his – there's always two separate beds. Like, I've got one bed. Him and his girlfriend always sleep in another bed. And they're always like, are you, are you like, choking in your sleep? Because all of a sudden, <laughs> we'll just hear you – you'll be sleeping. And all of a sudden, like, there's nothing. All of a sudden, we just hear <gasps> – My wife yeah. has recorded it. <laughs> yeah. She's recorded it, like – It's terrifying. It stops for, like, a few moments. And then I all of a sudden just jolt back for a breath of, like, a yeah. gasp of air. Yeah. Let me, let me put this into perspective. When we're in the van, he sleeps in the far back bench. Hell seat. It's called hell seat. Yeah. It's always the coldest and hottest seat. And the bumpiest. <laughs> and, the bumpiest. <laughs> and the bumpiest. Yeah, dude. It's so, thrown around everywhere. so he sleeps in the very back seat. I sleep kind of toward the middle. And then Jake usually will just recline the driver's seat because he's tall and can't fit on a bench. Yeah. We <laughs> each bring earplugs wherever we go just to fall asleep it is that loud from the back oh oh i would definitely have to suggest earplugs for that as well i mean i i've i know like people like in my family of course like everyone's sleeping in, like a same house together different rooms but like i've heard different people storing all the time too like when we're at family it's like like in a family like vacation i'm like jesus freaking christ i have to get earplugs for this shit <laughs> and so i totally understand the pain but Random kisses from biker women. I can't say that I have fully experienced that. I do usually get stuff from biker women, but it's usually free shots instead of random kisses. Yeah, you have, so. yeah, you have to tell the story. That too. So, like, we play every, like, because it's not terribly, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, like, that area is not terribly far from, like, the Twin Cities. So we play this little town outside of Eau Claire called Chippewa Falls. And uh, I think we were opening for Trapped or something. Not that I want to say that we opened for them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was Trapped or Saving Abel, one of those two. We were like a Did we open band. for Saving Abel? Yeah. Really? Yeah. When? It didn't feel like it, though. God, I I don't even remember the show. They're not played. the same band anymore. But... <laughs> okay. Let, well, let's, just, let's just say it was opening for Saving Abel, so you don't have to say you opened for Trapped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that never happened. Uh, so, like... It was after, it was like right after our set or whatever, like we get everything off the stage as quick as we can. And like I'm walking back to like the merch table area to like go see what everybody else is doing, mingle with fans. And this like biker lady just like, she's like, you, like does the you mirror thing, you know? <laughs> like, and I was just like, oh sure, she probably just like wants to say like thank you or like you guys are great or some shit whatever so like i come in and it's like loud because there's still music like playing over the pa so she like has me come in close fucking grabs my face and like lays a thick one on me. <laughs> and i'm just like whoa like what the fuck <laughs> she's probably like yeah, I don't know. she's probably like in her 50s or something but, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, not to you mention, uh, never mind we don't uh, need to go into that but, uh, i was gonna say you drive the 50 year old biker ladies wild man yeah i guess 
<laughs> it's kind of a running joke that I have like a thing for older women anyway, so it's like it just kind of added to that. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, I'm married, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say apparently they're on the prowl for Matt, despite the fact that he is happily married. So, yeah. ladies, I know you probably want him. You probably want to lay that big old kiss on him. But remember, he's married now. <laughs> Might want to lay off of that a little bit. Unless unless you want to keep making these funny stories come up, then, you know, I mean, I kind of like hearing them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake. Jake, uh, you're up, buddy. What uh, you got? Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the podcast. That's it. Uh, I am Tar. <laughs> My name's Jake. Uh, I play guitar in Divide the Fall. And uh, it's not really like a tour story per se, but it's a show story where there was this one time where we were playing with a band that I won't name. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. curious what this is now. Oh, it's kind of a show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we were playing with this national band. Um, mm -hmm. He's not in that band anymore. So That's good. Good. You can probably say no, that. I still wouldn't, but oh, like it's good right. that he's not in it anymore. Right. So a national band, right? Um, so we were in this venue, uh, Skyway Theater in Minneapolis. It's kind of a bigger place. Um, but they have like this series of tunnels to unload at this place. And was it? Shit, shit, I really didn't. <laughs> yeah, that it was really a mess. Was, it was a nightmare. Um, so it's the end of the night. We're all like loading out and there's like an elevator to take all of our stuff down to the lower floor for us to load out and we somehow managed to start to load out our gear before the headliner did and there was one member in particular who was very upset by the fact that the openers were loading out their gear before the headliner was, and he couldn't get onto his bus and all of this. Did, even, they, even, did they even have a bus? I thought it was just a van. Yeah. They had like an RV. Oh, okay. Like RV. okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Keep in mind, too, like, this guy was very, like, pretentious as well, though, that yeah. was, like, adding to that. Like, had this whole, like, very Hollywood attitude about himself. Which kind of added to this, but he was yeah upset that we were loading out, which we were given permission, I think, by the venue. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. To wait, because like downtown Minneapolis, there's a lot of crime, so like we didn't want to risk like loading our stuff out and having it sit there for another five hours, like while the show is going on, and then you know all yeah, of a sudden our stolen. trailer gets broken into or stolen. So that shit happens all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I'll let you finish the story. <laughs> So we're in these very narrow hallways underneath the venue trying to load our shit out at the same time as this dude who is arguably coked out or on something. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even say arguably. Like, it's... He was. We, I was, we didn't do a drug test, but, like, it was pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I feel like you're so much better at telling this story than me. All right. But Do you want me to finish it? Go ahead. Take over. All right. So. Because I just you, kind of blacked out from the situation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. There was a lot of adrenaline that happened here. So keep in mind, Jake, you can't see it in the video here, but Jake is six foot five. He's a big dude. And the person in this band was probably like five, seven, five, eight, like, Fairly built, but, like, not jacked. And they're loading out. Uh, I think Jake was loading some of our stuff out, and he was coming back in to grab more of their stuff. And, like Jake said, was upset about the situation that was happening. One of his other gripes was that he was in a national touring band, so he shouldn't have to carry his own stuff anyway. Yeah, he shouldn't he should have roadies to load his stuff out. He should yeah. be doing it himself. Despite the fact that this band, like, their last big hit was 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> oh, God. And, and he decides that the smart thing to do about this to get rid of his anger is to walk past Jake and shoulder check him as hard as he can. Oh, dear God. So, so Jake 
again, is six foot five and a big dude. And uh, he's he's a teddy bear until he has to not be. And then he's very much not a teddy bear in any way, shape, or form. So he took his forearm to the guy's throat and pinned him to the wall. <laughs> Holy shit. And said, do you really want to do this right now? Because <laughs> I just want to load out. And the guy, the guy in the band goes, yeah, fine, whatever. And Jake lets him go, and that was the last we heard from him for the night. <laughs> and then all of the rest of the band... Yeah, like sitting outside of the hallway, profusely apologizing to us. Yeah, like we don't know what got into this dude. We're yeah. so sorry. Uh, I think the answer the, is oh, coke. No, it, it was the other. The other band yeah, was it was. It was the other band that was on tour with them. Yeah, was apologizing yeah. for him. But, yeah, uh, but like the rest of the band was super cool. It was just that one dude that was like, yeah. just nuts. There's also he chucked that dolly. Oh, like, that's right. He threw a dolly. I forgot Wait, about what? that. <laughs> this dude threw a dolly. Yeah, he. Yeah, yeah. He, so yeah. Like, right around, right around the moment where he was like, I shouldn't have to even be like. He was like having a fucking like yeah. breakdown with himself. I don't know. He's like, I shouldn't even have to be loading my own shit. He, like chucks this dolly. I like, forgot down about this that. Hallway or whatever. Yeah. And it, like ricochets off the walls. We're just like, bro. What yeah. The fuck? Yeah. That was right before he decided to shoulder yeah. check Jake. So, yeah. so, so this dude who's basically got this like full on Napoleon complex at five seven is yeah. throwing yeah. around a dolly because he's in a national touring band and thinks he doesn't have to load out his stuff because he thinks he's like super high and mighty. Yep. Then shoulder you know what the kicker is the kicker in this is when this band was popular and had their last big hit, he wasn't even in the band yet. <laughs> like Wait, he, what? he joined the band on the downswing and thinks that he shouldn't have to do anything. Jesus Christ! And then, and then like the shoulder check on on Jake. What I'm expecting Jake to do, like after you put like your, your forearm to him and put him against the wall, like just to kind of just co completely just like make him feel smaller than he actually is. Just put your head on top of his. Just <laughs> so he how much smaller he is compared to you. <laughs> That would have been a good move. I that would have been. That. I feel like. Oh, so <laughs> Oh my god, that would have been incredible. That was. I'm not gonna lie. That was not the story I expected. That's a good one. Yeah. That's, that's not the story that you expected. Okay. Yeah. What's the story so you expected? Because I'm here loving these stories right now. So, we did a tour uh, a year and a half ago now. Because 2019. Yeah, end of 2019, and we had more scheduled for 2020, and then you know. <laughs> We all got fucked over with COVID. Yeah. Um, so the last tour we did was for two weeks, uh, fall of 2019. And the first show that we played was in Mankato, Minnesota. Do you know where this is going now? No. Oh, my God. Oh, okay, now it does. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there it like, is. Oh, yeah, there it is. Now we know. Okay. So we played a show in a bar in Mankato, Minnesota. And by the time we were done with everything and, you know, merch tables packed up and we're loading out, it was pretty late, like probably midnight at least. Yeah, midnight one in the morning. Yeah. Um, and the bar parking lot is adjacent to a church. And it's, it's not quite a shared parking lot, but it's pretty close. And the church typically gives permission to the music venue to let people park their van and trailer there. Yep. Like if there's an event going on. Yeah, because they have so, like that parking lot is a lot bigger. Probably they're going to have the space for your vans, yeah. and it's going to be a lot easier yeah. and not having to like compete with parking with people that are trying to see the show or drink at the bar at the same time. Yep. Exactly. 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 So we were parked in the church parking lot, and then to load out, we brought the van around to the bar parking lot, and we're loading out. And it turns out that Mankato is actually a hotspot for human trafficking. Specifically, specifically teenage human trafficking, which we found out after the fact. Um, so there was apparently a cop that watched us pull the van from the church parking lot to the bar parking lot and watched us for a while. And then at one point I got out of the van with a backpack on and for people only listening to the podcast and not watching this on YouTube, I look younger than I am. I'm 25 and I look like I'm 17. Um, 
Yeah, so you, you I'm sure right in the right cop now, like size, what they bit. saw was a teenager wearing a backpack getting out of this white van that was in a church parking lot and is now sitting in a bar parking lot. So, I wasn't in the van for this exchange because I had gotten out okay, our, with my backpack. Our photographer also hopped out with you, and she yeah. looks pretty young. Also. Yeah, yeah. Our uh, photographer also looks very young, and she got out at about the same time. So, pretty much right after we got out. Um, the cop rolls up whoop, whoop, and gets out, knocks on the window. Jake rolls down the window and he's like, oh, what can I help you with? And the officer goes, got any teenagers in that van? <laughs> to like, which, so random. yeah, which like, yeah. we had like no clue why they're asking at this point, of course, because we didn't know that it's a hub for human trafficking. Um, so Jake's like, uh, no, what? Like, no, we don't have any teenagers in the van. Like, I'm going to ask you again. Are you sure you don't have any teenagers in the van? Yeah, pretty sure. It's, uh, it's me, this guy, and the guy in the back seat. And that's it. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, yeah like which was Matt. The back seat. Okay, I, mean, I was like, it's Matt in the back seat. If he just looks at it, it's like, okay, Matt definitely does not look like a teenager. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, me, okay. Matt, eh, not really. But, uh, so she's like, well, what, what are you guys doing here? I'm like, well, we are, we just played a show. We're loading out. Like, oh, so you're a band. That's yeah. automatically a trigger for <laughs> yeah. cops. Like, oh, there's yeah. drugs in this beer. Yep, yeah. Like, <laughs> As soon as you say you're in a band, any sort of authority figure is like, oh, degenerates, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they they can, they kept asking questions. I don't know if it was anything really beyond, you know, do you have teenagers in there? Um, and then at one point, she's like, okay, can I see your license? So Jake pulls out his license, but he has a Wisconsin license at this point. So he hands it over. Oh. And... And she takes it, looks at it, and goes to the radio on her shoulder, just hits it and goes, yeah, I'm going to need backup. We got a Wisconsin license. <laughs> so, so another cop car pulls, like, they must have been waiting, because another cop car immediately pulls up. They're probably, like, right around the corner. Oh, yeah. Then. They were there waiting for this. They honestly yeah. they had Oh, it. yeah. I mean, it's men kid. Like, there's nothing better to do. It's a small town on a, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. On a what, Thursday night? Yeah, something like Thursday that. or Friday. Like, there's nothing better to do at this point. Yeah, it's just, it's just families in Minnesota State. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they asked a couple more questions, and then they were like, okay, you guys are good. Have a good night. Stay out of trouble. Whatever. But, like, like cool. They left us alone. That's great. But, like, reality is they were not good at their job in this moment. Because not once did they ask to look in the van for they, teenagers. They did, like, kind of walk back. Yeah, and, like, with, the with the flashlight. But how much can you really see? Yeah. And also, we have a trailer hooked up to our van that they never once addressed. <laughs> so, like, obviously we weren't smuggling teenagers. But, like, if we had been, they did a really bad job <laughs> of looking for them. I would say so because yes, you are you are a band. You guys just got done playing a show, so you do have the van and you do have a trailer that you're gonna put all your stuff in. Understandable, but think about it from the officer's perspective. I mean, there's a lot of things that you know if if it's if it's gonna be a hot spot for teenage human trafficking in Mankato, and that's what you're wondering about. There's gonna be a lot of questions when you see a large passenger van and a trailer in the back. Yeah, but if and if they would have opened up, if they would have asked to see inside the van, would have opened up, they would have seen Matt going there like. Hello, and just see yeah. probably all your guys' stuff and nobody else That's in there. Happened, dude. That's yeah, and then they would go on and then they would look <laughs> in the trailer. And, like, and, and then they'd ask to look in the trailer. You open it up, and all of a sudden they just see all your gear. And it's like, well, shit, they're telling the truth. But then, hey, you actually kind of did your job instead of just yeah. throwing a flashlight. Like, okay, I can't really see the van, but I guess they're good. And that trailer, you know, it's just a trailer. Yeah. Granted, I'm also kind of thankful they didn't search him because well, that means yeah. I would have had to get out. Like, <laughs> yeah. You'd have to wake up and get out. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been more work. <laughs> what an inconvenience. Yeah. So, so, so maybe they're maybe they're being a little bit nice them. I would just wanted to let Matt, you know, keep sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's the story. As we I got. was more worried because like when you're sleeping in the in the 
uh, seat, like you're not buckled in. So I was like, oh fuck, I hope we weren't like moving, you know. So then like, <laughs> oh, I've done that before you know. too, like with different friends. Like we've been, I've been like passed out in the back seat or something like that, and all of a sudden they get pulled over and I don't have my seatbelt on, and I'm like, you know what? It's a good idea. Just keep sleeping like keep yeah. pretending you're sleeping because holy shit does that actually no they don't address, they don't want to wake up the sleeping guy trust me like i've done it like a <laughs> times they don't address me because i'm just sitting there just like <sighs> yeah <laughs> even if i am like not sleeping i'm just like keep your eyes closed kevin look like you're sleeping <laughs> and then all of a sudden they walk away i'm like am i good i actually move now <laughs> yeah. but yeah so that's that's the time that uh we got the cops, uh, not called on us, but the cops rolled up and thought we were smuggling well, no. teenagers. So actually, how that <laughs> happened, though, how the cops were, like, alerted was that somebody at that church that gave the okay for us to park there was like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a suspicious van. Like, oh, our really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that somebody actually yeah. called the cops on us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like the music, the music venue is the one who gets the okay from, like, the church to park there. But, like, then they were, they must have saw us, like, walking back and forth. Because, like, if there's stuff in the van we need, we're just going to walk over to, like, where it's parked versus, like, driving it over every single time. That'd be stupid. But, like, I think they saw us, like, walking back and forth and they're probably like, oh, these guys look like degenerates. And then called the cops on us. And then, I don't know. (laughs) The rest is history, I guess. Yeah. Good times. See, these are some good stories, guys. I was not expecting this. That was the first day of that tour, too. So, like, had shit gone, like, another direction, like, we would have just not been able to do the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, Had shit gone a complete complete different direction, that would have been your first and last day on tour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that tour was... Yeah. Like, every (laughs) night was just something different on that one. Like, I don't think there was a night that just, like, went off without a hitch. Yeah. Yeah. Allentown, maybe. That was about it. Yeah, oh, that was the last night. Yeah, last yeah. night of tour was probably the only one that was like, we don't have any problems. Yeah. A perfect way to celebrate a tour of just a bunch of wacky stuff. The last night being a complete, well, dud in terms of like crazy story time, but yeah, nice. Honestly, for the fact that's that okay though, because like after 13 days of every day being something <laughs> happening. Like, oh, I did forget, like, all of our strings. Oh, and, like, that's right, yeah. Like, yeah, stuff. okay, I take it back. It was 14 days of ridiculousness. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, but looking back at it now, because, yes, that happened, like, later in 2019, then, of course, the past whole entire year to this point, we've dealt yeah. with no live shows, pandemic, all that kind of crap. You take a look back on that, and you're probably, you might be thinking, even though those stories are just absolutely ridiculous and those times are just absolutely crazy, you have to miss those in a way because oh yeah, it got, it got like it got ripped like for anybody that yeah. loves music or any musician, live music got completely ripped away from us and yeah. we miss doing all that. I mean, hell, I'm not, I don't pl- I don't play music, I don't perform or anything, but I, I'm always going to shows and I'm like I miss all the crazy stories that I have from live shows. So it's like it's kind of in a different way in the same in a similar structure. Yeah, I think like Jake said any of us would give anything at this point to get back on the road. And it looks like we're starting to get a little bit of that. I know we talked about right before we started recording, but again, taking a look at some of the stuff too, uh, Blue Ridge Rock Festival, they got, they get their confirmed dates for uh, like second weekend in September. All of a sudden uh, I know Rock Fest, like we're talking about here in Wisconsin, that looks like it's still going to be a go for July, especially with how the COVID-19 vaccine rollout is going in the state. Um, for uh and then like some other like bigger like actual national tours ginger just announced their insane run is going to be yeah. in later 2021 so you're starting to see stuff pop up but again at this point we're over a year since like the last like big live show i think the last big one i remember happening was march 15th of 2020 that might be it i'm not sure but again that's over a year at this point yeah last show we played was uh i think march 1st of 2020 yeah Oh, how, and how the, how much time has gone through there. Miss it so much. Yeah. It's all- yeah. No kidding. So when, I mean, what, when it takes, when you take a look at the stuff that's going on now, of course, again, like I just mentioned certain things that are seeming to pick back up again or planning to pick back up again later in the year. Um, when it comes to touring potentially in 2021, what are you guys working on right now? Potentially get back out on the road because again, been out for a year. I know you guys miss it. I know you guys want to get back out on the road. So what's going on? Yeah, so 
we're looking at booking, um, you know, a few smaller weekend runs here and there. Um, the big one we have, like, we can't officially announce it or anything yet, but we had a tour on the books. Uh, we actually got on it, like, two weeks before it was supposed to happen. Um, or mi yeah, I think it was, like, two or three weeks before it was supposed to happen. And uh, it would be with a, a big national touring band, like, playing Thousand Cap Rooms. And we got on it, I think, like, March 10th. And it was scheduled to begin April 3rd. Ooh. And literally, like, two days after we got on it is when everything shut down. <laughs> um, so it's been postponed a few times, obviously. And uh, right now they're saying that it should be being rescheduled for fall. So we're, we're hoping that everything goes well with it and we can actually do it in fall. Uh, but that's kind of the big one right now. I mean, I hope it happens too, especially with the fact that you guys got on this tour playing you know, thousand cap rooms, and then I'm expecting you guys to come to the come to Milwaukee with that tour at some point, play at the rave. I think it is some... actually. I think it does come to. I think yeah. it's probably going to end up coming to either the rave or uh, Route 20. What is what is that other venue in Milwaukee? I have no idea. Uh, shoot, I'm trying to, uh, might be X Ray Arcade. Yeah, X Ray is another one too. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. I don't know if Route Twenty is still open. I I've never really heard of Route just, Twenty. It's just south of Milwaukee. I think it's uh, closer to Racine actually. Okay. But. Um, oh, alrighty. Because I, I then I think that makes sense. But I mean, I could see it being one. I could see it easily being the rave because again, you got the three stages there, and yeah. I've seen. And I feel like 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 if it's a thousand cap, I could feel like it could be either in that uh, second level or in the basement level. Either or, yeah. I mean. The stages are just fucking fantastic. I love going to shows there all the time, and I still miss it so dearly. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never been there. I've heard a lot of stories about it. Like it's haunted. It is like haunted. A haunted venue. Uh, and it's like historical. I don't know, but yeah, it's uh, it used to be an old like Eagles Club when it was built back in like the 1920s. I think they converted to a music venue in the 1990s. Uh, apparently, there's two ghosts that live in the venue. Yeah. One's I, I don't remember exactly. One's a janitor that uh, hung himself there, and the other is a boy like about fifteen years old who drowned in the pool, <laughs> and the pool is still there. Yeah, um, I, I knew the pool was still there. I actually got like over uh, Halloween, over around like around Halloween, because like they were trying to make money kind of any way they can. They were letting people like if you paid a certain amount of money, they're letting people like do like hour, hour and a half tours, unguided tours through the venue. All lights were off. All you got was a flashlight. And I'm like, I am <laughs> fucking do this. I got to find this pool. Well, the last thing that I did was found the pool. And like the like the people I found, I found it with, they were all like kind of looking at the pool, freaking out. And here I am. I've got my flashlight. I'm looking all over the wall. I'm like, there are so many signatures here. I want to find signatures to shows I was at. Like that's all I cared about. <laughs> and I'm going through. I can't find one. As I'm leaving, I have to go up this little balcony thing. I'm like, man, I haven't found one. And then there's this giant, like, written signature from Ice Nine Kills. I'm just like, no shit. I look at the signature, I look at the date, and I'm wearing a shirt I bought on that day at that show. I'm like, okay, I found the one I want. Woo! Took a picture of <laughs> next to I was like, yeah. So if you guys get a chance to play at the rave, find the pool. It's in the. It's right by the uh, basement stage. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I mean, but, it'll depend. Uh, hopefully we'll be on that leg of the tour. Cause I know it's it's split into two legs and we're on one of them. Yeah. So just it really depends on what gets rerouted at this point. But I would. I'm, I'm basing that off of like the dates that we were originally given. Yeah. Which included a lot of like Midwest dates, but. Well, especially with you guys being based out of Minneapolis, too, it makes sense that uh, the leg like, of the tour would be on would be the one more based in the Midwest. Yeah, that was yeah. kind of what we were going for too. Is like a lot yeah. of the markets that we would. Obviously, it's like those are markets that we played like DIY shows in, like our own headline tours and stuff in. So it would be better for us to like come through those same markets with like a little bit larger of a band too. You know? Yeah, like play some of the markets kind of surrounding it that we haven't played before. But. Yeah, like of course play show in like Minneapolis, but play shows in Wisconsin, some in Iowa, some in Chicago, like one in Chicago, maybe Indiana, maybe Ohio, maybe Michigan, either or. But like kind of like that area as well, I feel like it'd be perfect for you guys, especially being based in the general Midwest area. Plus also with the style of music you play being perfect for the venues that are in this part of the country. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So I guess we'll see what happens with that too. Um, yeah. 
right now, yeah, it's we have like some tentative dates for it. It's just kind of we're holding out hope that things continue to like digress with COVID so that we can actually do it. So yeah. well, I mean, right right now again, like it's looking that way, especially especially with the fact that vaccines are being rolled out and it's actually going rather well in certain areas of the country, specifically, honestly, the Midwest. Like it's going pretty damn good over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I'm holding on hope, man. Like, that's, that's, really, that's all I can say. It's actually like, really cool, too, because, like, considering that, like, Wisconsin, I feel like, was one of the states that I feel like still had, like, one of the worst numbers with COVID. Like, uh, so we talked about it, I think, maybe before the interview started. Like, I just recently moved over to Wisconsin from Minnesota, and I felt like over in Minnesota, there was a lot more precaution and a lot more, like, taking in, taken yeah. into account with, like, COVID procedure. The, like two weeks after we moved over there, my wife and I both got COVID. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, sweet, welcome to Wisconsin. We're like, I don't know, just like everybody gets COVID over here apparently. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Wisconsin. I grew up there. It's a fantastic state. But yeah, I mean, my, my girlfriend lives in Wisconsin and just visiting her on weekends here and there, like, the difference between granted we're in Minneapolis where, you know, in the twin cities, things tend to be a bit more precautionary just in, in general. Yeah. And a bit more amplified on that end as well. Yeah. But like just the difference between here and then going to visit her was just, it was night and day. Like it was, it was insane. Like I would get there and it was like, all right, cool. Like we're just staying in for the weekend. We're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, but granted, not that not that yeah. we really do anything up here either. Like we're still trying to be safe and take precautions, but it's like there you don't really feel safe going out. We're here. It's like okay, like if we have to go out, we can. Like we're not worried about you know people not being careful. But yeah, it was it's crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say versus was, I was gonna say again versus me who's been in living in Wisconsin this whole entire time. And after about like, again, after like the two weeks, after that, like the two months after, you know, everything got shut down, all of a sudden it was like, okay, the bars can open back up again. And I'm just thinking, well, that's cool. I don't want to really want to go to the bars though, but okay, I guess they can open up. And now all of a sudden it's just like every bar has been running at like, I think yeah. for the past couple weeks running at like 50% capacity. It's just, and I've seen like my friends that work at bars seeing there, you know, social media posts or Snapchat stories. It literally looks like nothing has happened. Like, yeah. co- like COVID was never a thing. That's what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, and it's it's tough because like, part of me understands. Like, I, we're all sick of it. You know, like yeah. none of us wants to deal with this anymore. But at the same time, if we all have that mentality of like, oh, I'm I'm tired of this. Like, I want to go back to normal life. And you know, there's no restrictions right now from the state, so I can just go back to normal life and pretend like it's normal. Like, yeah, you feel, you sort of feel better, but at the same time, like that just pushes out the end of this even further. It's like, okay, well, cool. You felt normal for a couple weeks and then there was a massive outbreak and now you got to shut down again and kind of reset and you know, just, it just keeps pushing this out further and further. Because yeah, we're tired of it. Yeah, because we saw that massive outbreak here in Wisconsin in November, right before Thanksgiving, when it was like daily case count was almost at 8,000 a day. Yeah. And then all of a yeah. sudden it was, I'll put it this way for Wisconsin, Like, luckily it was right around Thanksgiving when that uh, spike because all of a sudden, now we're getting into December, January, February. We're getting into the winter months where people are naturally more inside yeah. anyway. Yeah. And that's why all of a sudden all, I was like, okay, now you're, seeing, see, you're starting to see the cases just drop, 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 drop. And now they've kind of hit that like bottom plateau, that valley where I think they're going to end up going up a little bit. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, is more people are getting the vaccine every single day. And that's really taking a toll on the number of or really hit, take, hitting the number of confirmed cases down because it seems like if people got the vaccine, but they end up picking it up, it's their body is so much more capable of fighting off where they're fighting off like it's a weak flu or a common cold versus the full on COVID. Uh, what would have been if they would have gotten it last year at this time? Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, and that, it's, it's, it's tough. Like it's, you look at the numbers and we've gone down so much since even January and like fingers crossed, we keep going down, especially with vaccination rollouts and stuff. But even, even in the States that are being more cautious, you're seeing restrictions being lifted. 
but you look at the numbers now compared to the numbers last summer, even when like, when it was like, Oh, this is bad. Like we need to stay inside. We need to do all this. And they're pretty similar numbers, but now because it's on the downswing, we're like, Oh yeah, like we're doing great. Open back up. It's like, ah, well, I don't know about it, that quite yet, but, well, uh, well, you know. I, it could also not be the fact that as we're on the down, so it could be also two-pronged with the fact that we do have that vaccination roll oh, going on. Absolutely. On top of that, though, again, that was last year at this time. We take a look at this year. It's the fact that we've gone through this. We've lived with this for a year. When it comes to, like, the hospital and medical standpoint, they're more equipped to deal with this because oh, yeah. there's more yeah. data on what we know what's going on and what's happening over the course of a year instead of just, you know, when the pandemic started, it was – yeah, well, the case count was relatively incredibly low, but the fact that we had no idea what this was going to cause yeah. and what the hell this was going to do—that's why everything got junk because it was, it, it was a mystery, and we didn't oh, want to yeah. we didn't want to take that gamble and all of a sudden have the hospital so overwhelmed where all of a sudden everyone was getting sick, everyone needed to go to the hospital, and the hospitals couldn't treat like we're just going to all of a sudden have to turn people away because they were full. That was kind of the whole entire premise of it. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Like, it's it, it's not like there's one specific, you know, thing that's causing reopenings or anything. Honestly, like, my biggest concern is just that we've hit this point now where it's like, oh, we got vaccinations and cases are going down and, you know, we're more equipped to handle it. So, like, let's open back up to, to an extent. You know, you have states like Texas and Mississippi opening up 100%. Uh, Minnesota is kind of doing a little bit of reopening. Some states on the East Coast are doing some reopening. Like, you there's a range here, but my biggest concern is just like, we look at it and go, Oh yeah, we're getting better. We're getting better. We're getting better. And we reopen to whatever extent it is. And then that ends up pushing everything out even further. It's like, you know, I, I don't know. It honestly, I just don't want to keep having to push out the end date to this essentially. Like, Oh, I totally understand that 100%. I, I mean, I like the fact that people are going to be more optimistic and people are hoping for the best, especially with the vaccine rollout. But I do understand your concern because what happens if all of a sudden we get to a point where we just open everything up and the number of people vaccinated against COVID-19 hasn't hit that certain point yet, yeah. where all of a sudden, you know, we're going to end up having more and more trouble with it to where states are going to have to not fully shut down because the number of people are going to be vaccinated, but have to start restricting stuff based on the fact that COVID-19 cases are increasing once again. See, what I'm hoping is, is like all of a sudden, let's say by, I'll use Wisconsin as an example, because that's pretty much what I know. I'm hoping by like all of a sudden, you know, middle, late June, that there's a, that the people that want to be vaccinated, because everyone will have a chance to be vaccinated at that point. The people that want to be vaccinated have that vaccine at that point, And then it's readily available for people that is readily available for everybody that wants it. So whoever's got it, got it. Whoever didn't get it, they still, they've had enough time to actually get it. So then we fully reopen. And then it's kind of like if cases start picking up again, it's like, okay, for people that got vaccinated, then it's going to be a lot less severe, hopefully. For people that didn't get vaccinated, hopefully they don't pick it up. But it's kind of get to a point where you had the you have the opportunity to get it. You fully have the opportunity to get it. It's kind of on your choice at that point. So we're dealing less with, I'm kind of like thinking, as we get to a certain number of people vaccinated, we have to start looking at, you know, we have to open up to the fact that we got to let the people, yeah. like basically people that got vaccinated, we're going to have a built up immunity against this, not full herd immunity, but we're going to have a built up number against this so that yeah. kind of we can go back to that normal and be more free at that point. Oh, absolutely. I think then the question, and this hasn't really been addressed by any states that I've seen so far, but I'm curious to see what it's going to look like when they do get to this point. Well, the question then becomes, you know, in regards to people being vaccinated or not, are states going to put restrictions on like, yeah, you can go do these things and that's great, but you have to provide proof or not even states, but just companies in general. I'm, oh, I, I'm, I can see where you're coming from that. I'm not going to take a side on, on, you know, what I think it should be or shouldn't be. I'm just curious to see what it's going to end up looking like. I'm, I'm very like, curious as well as because also I'll put it this way. Like I've seen like there's certain times when you have to travel somewhere where it's like you have to show proof of certain vaccinations. Yep. And I think they're going to end up doing that with the COVID-19 vaccine, which for that, it's like that's already kind of in place with certain with a certain other like you go to a country, you go to these, you go to this country, you have to be you have to have this vaccination in order to go. That's already kind of in place. So I understand that. But when it comes to like, OK, if you want to go to a concert, you have to show proof of vaccination. That's what I'm like. 
oh boy or like want to go to a sporting event just want to go out maybe yeah. travel from state to state all of a sudden you get pulled over at like the at the state border like if you're going from yeah. wisconsin to illinois and you pass the toll like the 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 I-94, like the, uh, yeah, the toll road. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, the toll road is going to become, you have to get like, you have to show proof that you've been vaccinated. It's like, well then yeah, yeah. what are, what are we doing out here? Again, I don't want to yeah. take full on sides on this one. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. But again, it's just going to, I think it's going to depend upon how many states actually get these successful vaccine rollouts. And it seems like more and more are starting to get those success numbers going. So hopefully it gets to a point where all of a sudden, you know, Maybe let's just say beginning of August. Hopefully, it gets to a point where again in the country, everyone like I think it's like sixteen or older, everyone over sixteen or over has the chance to be vaccinated and has had the time to get vaccinated to yeah. the point where all of a sudden it's like now we're dealing with freedom of choice here. Yep. Yeah, that's that's the hope. And then at that point, then we can go back to you know you guys playing live shows, you guys traveling all over the country. And we can get back to people like me going crazy, going to these shows, living life, enjoying it as much as you guys are. And if you're like me, probably getting hurt in the pit. But, you know, <laughs> I just enjoy doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it's – it's uh, and we can use this to kind of segue into another topic, um, you know, just kind of the, the state of music and the industry at this point. But uh, it'll be – the reason that it'll, I, I kind of see both sides on the, you know, vaccination requirements – is I get it from a standpoint of, you know, we want to make sure that people are safe, you know, require vaccination proof to go to a concert, let's say. Um, but then the other part is, you know, the state of where things are right now is that to play bigger shows, if you're not signed to a label or have, you know, a massive booking contract or anything, you, you got to pay, you have to pay to be on these shows. So it's like we have money invested in this tour that's supposed to happen. And if all of a sudden you have to show proof of vaccination and that limits the amount of people that can come see us play, it's harder for us to make our money back. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. It'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. I'm not, you know. I absolutely love the fact that you brought that point because I wasn't even thinking about that. I'm just thinking, holy shit, you're absolutely correct on that. Because then what's because then what's going to happen with in the music industry, what's going to happen with live shows if all of a sudden you have to show proof that you're vaccinated, there's going to be people that haven't gotten vaccinated that want to be at those live shows because they love live music so much or they love your music that now they can't go and they're going to, and it might go against like what they, what their personal beliefs are right. with the whole entire vaccine yeah. thing. So then they're going to weigh that over going to see you guys live or going to see any band live for that matter. And yep. then when it comes to overall revenue, you guys are going to lose out. The venue is going to lose out. So what's going to end up happening? These ticket prices are going to end up increasing to a point where if I want to go see a show, I'm going to use the rave as the example. If I want to go see a show at the rave that normally would have cost me, let's say 30 bucks a ticket for like, for let's say like four bands. And that's, that's a great deal in my opinion. All of a sudden yeah. now I want to go and I take a look at it. And overall, like the ticket price, the label ticket price is $75 and then the um like the the convenience fees and the venue fees and all the other stuff that they have on top of that <laughs> yeah, my ticket yeah. ends up being yeah, Ticketmaster is a whole separate issue <laughs> yeah I don't even want to talk about Ticketmaster or anything like that usually when I buy my tickets like I like if it's from the rave I'll go either directly to their site or if I can't I will actually go to the venue and just be like let's yeah. just take care of this right here now yeah yeah or when they give me free tickets, too, I absolutely love that. But what I was going to go with that is now all of a sudden, say I have to pay, say I was paying $30, and then with, uh, we'll add the community, say I'm paying $37.50 in 2019 for a show. And that same show will be in 2022, based on what we were talking about with you guys trying to make, you know, be able to make money because you have to pay to be on these tours. And then the venue wants to make money, the headline acts want to make money, everyone wants to make money on this. All of a sudden, the, the prices are $110. Let's just say that's a, uh, what about that? That's about a, that's about a, like a three, like a, what, a 200% yeah. increase Two, right there. Yeah. All of a sudden I'm for me, I love going to shows. I'm going to be more selective of the shows that I go to because of that. So all of a sudden it's like, okay, I want to go to see, like, I don't really go see three shows. Now I have to pick only one because that's what I, that's what I want to spend the money on. And I'm looking at it and say, you guys are on tour with whatever band you're going to be on or planning to be on tour with. Don't know what it is, but I'm just going to use that example. And then all of a sudden there's another show I want to go see. Let's say, I'm just use motionless and white. Say motionless and white is the headliner. And I really like motionless and white. But then there's another night where I could spend 110 bucks and see Rise Against. 
Now I got to pick between the three. And at that point, I'm like, what is going to be, you know, the work, what's going to be worth it for me to go see a show? I'm going to go pay to go see Rise Against again because I'm not going to miss out on that. And that's where the problem comes in due to the fact that I want to see all three. But now because of just all this extra, you know, money that's got to be put into it, it limits me. It limits me to put more stock into what I really want to go to and only go to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I've already seen it in, I'm sure you guys can both attest to it too, I've already seen in plenty of comment sections where they're, it's like, oh, would you get a vaccine if you could see a live show again? And there are people that say yeah, but there are a lot of people that say no. Like, I don't care if it means I can go to a show again, I'm not getting it. I'm like, you know, that's that's their choice. There's, you know, you can't force them to do it, but like it just makes it harder for us to make our money back at that point. Like fewer people to, to buy tickets, fewer people to buy merch. Yeah. I don't know. It'll, Cause I've seen, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when shows come back. It, it will be. An, uh, and Jake, man, I want to get your guys take on this as well. But like when I see those comment sections as well, because I've seen them um, multiple different places, multiple different band pages, that Sirius XM Octane fan page of Mr. Joel Fano runs big shots to Joel Fano. Once again, dude is amazing. But it's yeah. seen like the comments where it's there are people that are like, yeah, I'll definitely go get a vaccine if I go see a live show again. And there's a lot of people that just say, no, I won't get a vaccine if it means I can't see a live show again. I'm on the end where I love going to live shows so much. Like there is a stress reliever there that is better than anything I've ever found before. Better than going to the gym, better than just jamming out, better than playing soccer, which I absolutely love. Going to a live show, jumping in a pit, getting hit for that first time. I like the, like the stress relief, the energy, I get so jacked up in the moment. Like I'm locked in, nothing else fucking matters. It's the greatest thing in the world. So I'm like, if I have to get the vaccine to go see a live show again, what am I going to do? I'm like, you'll be seeing me the first in line going, hit me. (laughs) But I totally understand the point where all of a sudden, again, it's going to limit the, like if you're going to require vaccines to go see live shows, it's going to limit the capacity that people that are going to want to be at those live shows. It's going to limit the overall revenue that you guys are going to be able to bring in as bands and it's going to end up jacking up the ticket price for us fans so that the venue and the bands can, can make some be able to make money. But it's going to end up at the cost of we're not able to go see as many shows as we want to go see. We're not able to spend the money to go to your venue three, four times. You might be able to only spend the money to go there once and then buy merch, buy more tickets. We're going to only get to be there once. It's a lot easier to get us to come back if we're going to be there for four shows than to get us to come back if we're only going to be able to be there for one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Say so, Matt. Like with this whole entire idea of like with uh, potential for concerts, like if like these issues that might come up post pandemic, what are you thinking about this? Yeah, I mean, like for me, it's pretty simple. Like, I mean, I I just feel like if you know if it were gonna prevent us from being able to tour, like overall, the more people that have the vaccination, I feel like it'll be better for everyone. Like, it'll be you know less chance of there being an outbreak again or you know i guess a better chance of people being able to fight covid um you know even the people that don't end up getting the vaccination at least the numbers will be like far fewer um but yeah like i've I've said it like a number of times like if it meant that like we could go tour again or whatever you know like i don't know i don't know about the whole aspect of like you have to prove that you've been vaccinated that whole i don't get into like that aspect of it but like if it meant that like i had the peace of mind to know that i was going to be you know uh not at more of a risk like getting sick like just to go and do something that i like love to do like then by all means like sign me up (laughs) by all means it's another one of those hit me exactly yeah (laughs) Uh, i mean like I, i will say like on the other side of it like i'm also like very like uh uh, like, it, it, like, there's a part of it that like, kind of makes me nervous. Like, I don't like getting shots or anything like that. I don't like the thinking about like what that's doing, like inside of my body or anything. But like, at the end of the day, like, there are people that are far, like far smarter than me, scientists that are far smarter than me that have like created this. So it's you know, fuck it. I don't know. <laughs> Man, I totally understand that a hundred percent because when it comes to this, like there's, there's no, like one, there's no two answers here. It's no, you know, black and white answer. There's so much gray in the middle of this to the point where when you talk to any person, when you talk, when I talk to you, when I talk, talking to, if I ask Jake, if I ask Ethan, which we already talked about, if I ask any other band that I have in the podcast, if I ask any person that I talk to, 
everyone's going to be thinking a little bit differently based on perseverance, based on beliefs, based on whatever the heck they're thinking and whatever they put the most value in. So it's going to be just completely different in terms of overall mindset, opinion, whatever it be when it comes to getting these vaccines, when it comes to if vaccines are going to be required to play, to either play live shows, attend live shows, go to concerts, all that kind of stuff, go to these large music festivals, travel, whatever it might be. There is so much going on here that it's not just yes or no. It's, it might be yes, but, and then a laundry list of shit. No, but, and another laundry, laundry list of shit. Like it could be any, any of those two. It could be anything really. Yeah, yeah for sure. But at that point, I just want to say, I just want my live shows back, man. I just want it back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. I just want to be on a stage again. Like I just, like, I missed like the social aspect of it too. Like, you know, like a lot of, like we're, we're kind of a smaller band. So at this point, so a lot of the people that are like fans of our band are people that like even if they weren't originally like friends of ours, like you become like, you know, good friends with the people yeah. that like support you like throughout that, like throughout them, like being followers of your band. So like, I just kind of like miss the social aspect of like hanging out after we, it's like, like not even so much about like playing the music part of it. It's like more so like getting to interact with people like after you've already played or before the show or, you know, that aspect of it. But, um, yeah, I'll see. like we're all we're all so awkward too, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, I a hundred percent agree, but at the same time, we are the worst <laughs> when it comes to like talking to people after shows because when you hear, and this this is not to say to anyone listening, like, don't go up to us after the show and tell <laughs> us we did a good job. Like, no, like, please do come talk to us. Like, we love to talk to people because we need it. Yeah, because like <laughs> we, we need we need validation is what we're saying. Validate me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, to to quote Broadside, validate me or I'll give in. Um, Look at that show a second. Broadside's good. a band. Oh, I thought you said Broad City. Oh no, no, yeah. you meant, I, I knew you were talking no, about Broadside. It's, it's a, a Broadside song. Oh. Um, but no, like we love when people come talk to us. That's like to make a genuine connection with people after a show is amazing. But fair warning, we are so awkward. Like all of us are very much introverted people. Yeah. And when we have people come up to us and like, oh, you guys are so good. And we go, oh, yeah, thank you so much. Like, glad you enjoyed it. And then the next response is, yeah, man, you guys were amazing. We're like, thanks. You don't know, you don't know what to say now. Like, <laughs> you want to buy a shirt? <laughs> but well, no, like, we, to Matt's point, like, talking to people after a show is, it's so cool. Especially, like. Don't get me wrong, I want to play arenas someday and, like, sell out these massive shows. That would be incredible. Like, that's that's the dream. But at the same time, to play these smaller venues where we have, you know, 100, 200 people there, and to just be able to hang out after a show and interact with people and, like, go up to the bar and grab a drink and somebody goes, oh, hey, like, you guys were really good, you know, or, or to ask about, like, oh, like, this is my favorite song, like, what what was the inspiration behind it? Like to have those conversations with people and just genuinely connect with fans after a show is just such a cool experience. Or like I've had like people reach out and like tell us like how songs that like we've written have impacted them or whatever. Yeah. That, that is one of the most surreal things. Yeah. Cause, Cause like, like you're not thinking about that. Like when, yeah. like, when we write it, it's not to sound like selfish, but it's like for us, you know, it's like yeah. to get us through whatever the hell we're going through. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, but it's like, uh, yeah, and then, like, somebody comes up and says, like, this song, like, helped me through this. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy. Yeah, so, I mean, a perfect example of that is Jake and I work at a coffee shop, and um, one of our coworkers, like, we've, we've known him for years at this point. Like, you've known him for longer than I have, but even I've known him for three years at this point. And one of the songs on our last EP is called Fake Love. And, like, I wrote it about a relationship that just ruined me at the time. Like, I'm, I'm good now. But, like, at the time, like, it, it was bad. Like, it was just this toxic relationship. And I didn't realize it when I was in it. And then it ended. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was real bad. And, you know, Fake Love kind of came out of that. And I didn't write it for anyone else. Like I wrote it for me so that I could 
deal with it and and just get everything out and then this guy that we work with that we've known for years like listens to it and goes yeah i was driving and blaring that song and just crying because i related to it and it was like oh like shit that's i mean like i'm sorry but that's amazing like it, it it's so weird to know that the things that we put out into the world like matt said essentially for ourselves in the moment really connect and impact other people and i think that's that's really what we strive for at the end of the day but we don't ever expect that it's going to happen yeah oh totally understandable now it's my time to drop some knowledge on you guys because <laughs> well it, it it goes hand in hand with what you're talking about with fake love as well because I'll put it this way. Whenever I go through like a podcast and I always want to learn about an, like a band, there's always going to be at least one or two songs that I really like dive deep into full analysis of it. And fake love is the one. So this kind of all fits in. Yeah, nice. But when it comes to all those fans that are coming up to you and just relating to the song, like your uh, friend at the coffee shop, or all of a sudden it's just like the dude's, you know, blaring the song in his car and crying because he's related to it so much. It's because when you're talking about stuff that you're going through personally, what ends up happening is, is yeah, you're going to end up using your lyrics. And you're going to have more metaphors behind it because you don't want to just like completely call out the person or just completely just like full on put it out there in such a like kind of like this like coded like one in zero way where either like if you vague. went through the, like you kind yeah. of have to be like vague about you can't how you, you, like write lyrics. So yeah. that it's like, I was going to say you have to be more you have to be more metaphorical about it because if you're way yeah. too vague, then it's really hard to kind of figure out what's going on. But if you're too uh, concentrated on it and you're kind of like telling the whole story. What ends up happening is, is if you didn't go through that exact same story, you're not going to connect. But if you use more metaphors, people are going to relate to the emotion of it and really fully understand it. And that's where they connect it because the emotion of what you went through specifically is going to be very similar to the emotion that they went through specifically, though the stories could be two completely different things. It happens all the time. And that's where I think music really brings its power because it gives people this connection to their own emotions that maybe they're not the best at expressing. And when you try and express it in song, it's like something that they can absolutely feel. Using fake love in, in, a, in a perfect uh, context, using the vocals on this one, because I'm looking at my notes right now. That's why I'm always turning my head because I want to make sure I get this fucking right. Because looking at the vocals, like in the bridge, kind of the vocals, I saw them take like a lower and rougher tone as we build in the breakdown. I'm like, okay, hold the fuck up. Are we getting the heaviness that I think this song absolutely needs going into the breakdown? Because... Again, looking at the concept of fake love, like I was like, okay, I'm kind of relating to this topic already, but like, there's like listening to it, I'm like, and there's a bit of heaviness in there that I know I felt at some point during what I went through, and I'm just hoping that it comes in at some point. All of a sudden, the breakdown hits, and we get the unclean vocals here. And as I wrote this down, and it is oh so glorious because in the unclean vocals, we feel that contrite anger of being strung along. And it seemed to bring the song full circle with its overall meaning. And even at the bottom that I put, trust me, I know this because I've dealt with this before and it fucking sucks. And it's just the anger that comes out when you finally realize what the hell is actually going on. It was absolutely perfectly put out here with that sound of unclean vocal in the breakdown. So I'm like, holy shit. That's where I really connected with the song was right then and there. Because again, it's how the emotion ties in. You could have gone through something completely different than I did, Ethan. But the emotion of that anger was there in that breakdown, and it was so connected that I felt it completely. Yeah, and I think, like, at, at the time as we were writing it, I don't think that that was an intentional decision. I think it was just like, yeah, like, we feel like it should probably go this direction. And Jake wrote this really cool breakdown on the guitar with the drop pedal, and we're like, yeah, like, that fits really well. Let's do it. And, um, and, and we just kind of went that direction. But, yeah, like, looking back, you know, I 100% agree where, you know, the song is about just kind of, like I said, just this toxic relationship, but, you know, any relationship like that is going to have this kind of anger under the surface. And yeah, that breakdown just, oh, like oh, that no. is, that's so fun to play live too. I think that's why that's probably like our fan favorite song too. Yeah. Because it's like the if if we could have i mean if it would have been at that point i think that probably would have been like the first single that we would have released from the year yeah. for sure just because i think it's a, a such a great representation of like what the style that we've done before but like also kind of like where we want to go maybe dabbling with a bit like heavier stuff but um 
I guess I never even thought about it as like coming full circle until until you mentioned it, Kevin. Like, like the fact that it has like the done with me. Now you're on to the next one yeah. line or whatever. Like, I guess I never would have even like thought about how that comes full circle with the lyrics that are like in the rest of the song. Because a lot of the a lot of the rest of the song is kind of vague, or it's like you know kind of um, more metaphorical, not so direct, I guess you know as to like, hey, I'm calling you out like in the bridge, you know, with like indirectly, but like calling you out, you know, in a way. Yeah. Oh, I can, oh, I, cause I got a couple of things to say about that as well. So fasten your seatbelts, guys. First <laughs> off, with the breakdown that was written by uh, Jake on this one. I'm looking at my notes right now because I like I put in the breakdown. It goes heavy melodic with the drums having some of those like double kick fills. I'm always huge in the double kicks. I absolutely love them. The guitar is playing this much lower tone, but like keeping them a lot of heavy pace. So I'm like, it was absolutely perfect because fake love sucks when you realize what is happening. This anger just comes up out of you. Need to express it, and it's just done here in this breakdown. And even from more like a personal standpoint, because there was a time where I dealt with this for shit. How many years was that? I gotta think about this one. So five or six where I got like strung along by, by a girl. And it was like, got to a point where the anger just kind of came up and I was like, I have to be done with this. So it was like that just like realization and just the anger of how much time was wasted at that point on something like this. I was just pissed. Just, I was ready to smash something to pieces, but I'm like, you know what? Let's just break this away completely. And that's kind of like where the final chorus comes in where it's like that anger comes out. You kind of get, you kind of let your head clear a little bit. And they just kind of make that clean break. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what the song is like a hundred percent. And so getting into the, the music kind of production side of it for a second, yeah. what makes that breakdown sound so ridiculously heavy. Number one is the drop pedal. Um, so the guitars are tuned in, was it G sharp? For that yeah, one? Drop G sharp. Yeah. So like, it's a low tuning to begin with. Um, but then when the breakdown hits, uh, Jay clicks on the drop pedal, which drops it another third below that. So it's just this disgustingly low <laughs> breakdown. Um, but then the second time through, there's a layer that we recorded in there and we recorded it a half step above the actual like main line. Um, and, and for any, anyone listening that, knows their music theory um if you play a, a note and the note a half step above it at the same time it sounds really bad like it, it like it's just yeah, yeah it's just disgusting. dissonant like yeah. there's it does it will never sound good it's essentially if you took the jaws theme song and you play that da, 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 at the same time like it just sounds bad but when you record it and layer it properly it gives it this just kind of uneasy feel and we had already recorded the breakdown and actually sent it to our producer. Like the song was recorded at this point. And one day Jake was listening to some other song and was like, they do this in this song. And I think it would sound really cool. Let's try it. And he sat down and played it and we we're like, yeah, that has to go in there. So we, we talked to our producer real quick. We're like, Hey, um, heads up. We're sending you a track. We need you to put this in there and mix it in the right way but it needs to be in there. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you listen to the second half of the breakdown, it when it gets somehow even heavier, like that's what's happening, is it's just complete dissonance through the entire thing. But when you add that uneasy feel to it, especially at the point that you're in, it just, again, when you look at that feeling of fake love and all of a sudden you get that anger to come up in you, there also is an uneasiness that happens there because now you have to make a decision on like trying to clear your head and what you want to do with this. So there is an uneasiness there because either you're going to break away from it and kind of go into the unknown, which is scary in its own right, or you're going to stick with it, but you know what, you know what to expect and you know it's not a good thing. So it's that uneasy, that uneasy feel just on that little dissonance part. Holy shit, that just adds so much more to the overall meaning of the song. And it's something that, again, it's so minute in terms of like what yeah. you guys did to it. But sometimes those so minute things can just add so much to it. Yeah. So the, the funny part, too, about that song on bass is that the drop that drop pedal that we use for guitar to do that lower, like, to go that extra, like, third below the lowest note 
to go that much lower. It doesn't work very well for bass because bass is already like a full octave, like below a guitar. So like the bass, like if you were to click on that pedal, it's you're gonna hear it like changing. It's trying to like change the note, but it can't ever fully like read it. Like we've tried it because like yeah, that was originally it, it doesn't work well. <laughs> yeah, that was originally what we were gonna try to do with that part for me for bass too. But instead, I just end up having to play the octave higher. So I'm actually playing the same note that the guitar is playing that like once that lowest note i guess is clicked on i have to have one string tuned differently like for that song so that i can just hit that string like as an open note but it's like it's it's kind of hard to explain so it's like it's not nearly as fun to play on bass live as like the guitar part because it's just like you're just banging like that lowest open note versus like <laughs> bass i'm somewhere like in the middle of the uh somewhere in the middle of like the the strings like trying to hit just the right string uh so that it i don't know like is the correct note or whatever it's kind of weird but it's kind of it's, a tuning nightmare but i have to like kind of mentally prepare myself for it so it's weird but in the, in the end of it it just works like it, yeah. again listen to the song <laughs> like what the heck was that? Oh, wait, uh, Jake's dog. dog. Yeah, sorry. All, all righty. If you're gonna tell me that there's gonna be a there's a dog that's barking and I'm not gonna be able to see this dog, then there's a little bit of a problem because I want to see what this dog looks you like. See the dog? You oh yeah. The Plus, when it comes to podcasts, I found out and anything on the internet, dogs sell. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a bigger dog than I thought it was. <laughs> So everyone that's listening to the podcast and not watching on YouTube, there's a dog on the podcast. He just waved to us and he's woofing at the same time. You're going to want to watch this video. Trust me. What is she? She's a lab pit bull mix. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can, you can see a lot of the lab in it, but like in the ears, that's where you really see more of that like lab pit bull mix. A little bit in the face too. She's a sweetheart though. Yeah, she is. She's a big baby. <laughs> And as Jake's just holding just big full on. <laughs> well, always whenever I get a chance to see a dog in the podcast, because I, I, there's one I've done it with. I've done it once with um this band called Necessary Noise. This guy his name's Jordan. He's had his three dogs just randomly run to the room at times. Both times I've oh, shot with yeah. him. Then there's this guy that lives out in Australia. I interviewed him and his dog just randomly walked in and was just like taking over the show at one point. Then like, like the net, like two weeks later, cause his daughter's also in, uh, has, has her own rock band project as well. I interviewed her and the dog did the exact same thing. I'm like, well, oh, anytime gosh. I see a dog, no, I got to bring a dog. I got to like, I got it. If I hear it, if I see it, I want to see it like in full view. <laughs> plus when I run the ad for this podcast, I include plus there's puppies. <laughs> yeah. That always sells. So when it comes to like, okay, and I'll, I'll ask you this. When it comes to fake love, overall, I can easily see on Spotify right now that it is your most popular song in terms of overall like listen listenership, playthroughs and everything. Um, What has been the overall reception of the EP outside of fake love that you guys have seen? Yeah, you want to take that one? Uh, I mean, I think it's been really positive. Um, I'm so mad. It's been like obviously the, the EP is a little bit different than or like the most recent EP is a little bit different than what we've released before. But it's called Dead Memories, by the way. We keep just saying the yes. EP. We don't ever <laughs> call it by its name. Oh, don't don't worry. If you're watching the podcast on YouTube the whole entire time, you'll see a little thing on the bottom of the video that says Dead Memories EP. Go check it out after this podcast. And I'll have you, it down there. If you don't, we're gonna track you down and send Jake after you. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna forehand check you into a wall. Listen to our music. <laughs> <laughs> listen to our music, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, from what I've noticed, it's been really positive. Um, it's been kind of like a, a more of like a mature sound for us, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a better depiction of like who we are as people and musicians and all of that. So seeing like all of the positive feedback on that has been really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean like, so like our first EP, um, so I guess not to really dive too much into like the background of the band unless we want to, but, um, 
like some of the songs for the first EP, even like maybe just like one or two of them, we started writing before we even found Ethan as our vocalist. So um, like we had a song called Our Existence that Jake and I had an old band like back then and I think like back in 2013 that I had started writing that song for and it wouldn't have really fit our style. It was like we were more of like a, I mean, our band is very much influenced by Breaking Benjamin as well, but that band was very much like a, like a Breaking Benjamin red, like knockoff band or something, you know, but, uh, so it wouldn't have really fit, but I'd started like writing the lyrics for that song, Our Existence, and we had Left for Dead, which was another like demo. It was actually like, one of the first demos we sent you. Yeah, you actually, yeah, you sent it to me. Before I auditioned, you were like, "Yeah, this is the style that we're writing." Yeah, and you sent it to me, and I was like, "Oh yeah," which is shit, funny. I'm in. Yeah, which is funny because even for that EP, "Left for Dead" is a really different song yeah. than yeah. a lot of the other ones that are on that. But uh, um, it was way more like that riff was kind of like a kind of always just reminded me of like a drop tuned like Amber Lynn riff. I don't know yeah. if you listen oh, to yeah. Amber Lynn at all. Um, Very minimally. Like, yeah, but um. Yeah, I don't know. So um, I don't remember where I was really going with that. But, oh, I guess, like, so for this this next EP, I mean, like, it was a lot more, um, you know, songs like Fake Love and um, I Won't Fade Away, Bring You Down. Like, those were Ethan kind of, like, I think a little bit more involved with, like, the lyric writing, yeah. too. And, uh, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm, I'm still not quite there, but I definitely feel like I found my voice a little bit more on the second EP. Yeah, for sure. And as time goes on, when you guys continue to write new music and continue to work on new stuff, like you're going to finding different things about your sound that you want to include in there. Ethan, you're going to find more about your voice and you're going to find more about your personality when it comes to writing lyrics or to express certain things in the way you want too much like you do with fake love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Left for Dead is it's an interesting one. I think for, I still love that song. Like it's it's such a like yeah. um, it's kind of like I think people liked it on that like people that really loved that first EP. Our first EP was just self titled. It was just Divide the Fall EP. Couldn't really think of a better title. Honestly, yeah, probably should have. Yeah, but uh, too late now. <laughs> yeah, so like we only have the two EPs now. We have the the first one which is self titled, and then Dead Memories, which were released end of last year. But um, yeah, uh, Left for Dead was like one of the kind of like one of the first songs that we originally like started writing for that. Went through a lot of different like renditions and a and then, lot. And then we eventually, uh, I think you you wrote. I think you wrote the lyrics for that song actually too. Uh, I, I feel like that one was pretty combined. Was like that? yeah, so like for that EP. I think the only one that I wrote all of the lyrics for was uh, City Lights. Yeah. Um, our existence was pretty much all you. And I feel like the storm... You, and... had, you had like a few lines in the storm. Yeah. I wrote the storm when I was in the shower. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like the storm and Left for Dead <laughs> were probably the most kind of co-written that yeah. we did. And then Alone was mostly you as well. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, I don't remember even where we were going with that. Sorry, it was just kind of like <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought, which I do a lot. But. I don't know. Left for Dead is an interesting song though, because like there was a point where I think we've kind of come back around on it now that we haven't played it in a long time. Yeah, we all hated it. Oh yeah, there was a point where we all hated that song. I still don't really with like a to, passion. I still don't really like to play it live because the bass line is like so stupid easy. Granted, I still fuck it up like, <laughs> but because it's like it's stupid easy like throughout like the main riff sections because it's like the bass doesn't really do much. You'll have to go back and listen to that song. Yeah, and just to kind of like I guess maybe know like what i'm talking about but it's for the most part just kind of like the bass is just kind of rocking like an open note like on yeah. the beat with the drum but then like there's some fancy shit that i do throughout different parts of it and it's the fancy shit that i fuck up but it's the like super basic like open notes where we're playing live or i'm like yeah like everybody else is doing something that's kind of busy like drums are doing their thing he's like singing and i'm just like bop 
Uh, <laughs> I'm just like, I fucking See, hate my life. See, I actually, I really enjoy playing that song live because it is so simple. Yeah. And I can just go hard. Yeah. Like It's also lower in your range. Yeah. Too, so yeah, I, I don't have to strain up yeah. to hit it. Like, like the storm, like, Grant, this is just kind of testament to how, I, how I've progressed yeah. as a vocalist, but... When we recorded the storm, I could barely hit the top notes in that chorus. Like we were, we were getting to playing our first show, and I was like, I don't know if I can sing this live. Like, yeah, we have it recorded, but I don't know if I can sing it live. I remember, like, I came in with the like chorus idea for that song. Yeah, and we were talking about like what key we were gonna like play it in. And keep in mind, like, we don't have like a ton of guitars. Like, we we do have a couple for like different tunings. But it's usually like, okay, we need to decide between like one or two. I think now we play like three different tunings. Um, yeah, B, A, and G sharp. Yeah. Yeah. So like at that time though, we were only using two different tunings. So I'm like, all right, well, you either got this tuning or that <laughs> tuning. And so like we went with the lower tuning because it worked better with his range. But like he... I, it was I felt still like he, up there. Yeah, like it was like so like tough for him to like get those like higher notes. And I think I've mentioned this before on the new EP, like your voice, I think that's probably what is like the best part about it is that your voice is like matured like so much more. <laughs> and we also did like record it like with a producer versus like yeah. the first one we did ourselves and just sent it to the guy to like, to mix and master. Yeah, we were, like, we were definitely more mindful in the writing process. Yeah. But even having said that, now where we're at, like, The Storm is one of the easier songs for me to sing. <laughs> like, yeah. But in the end, that just overall shows growth within you guys as a band and overall through your musicianship as well to the point where, yeah, with The Storm, it went from being something where you thought you weren't going to be able to play it live because of your, like, where the range of vocals was to a point now where it's like, oh, this is one of the easier songs we work with. And with creating this, this newer EP as well, just really working on – Understanding more of the musicianship that comes with it, understanding more of the process that comes to not only recording this, but mixing and mastering and making sure everything is the way it is. You're definitely like what uh, I think what uh, Jake said, kind of having a more mature sound on this EP. Yeah. It yeah. shows with just that overall growth with knowledge of how this process works. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think with the new one, like not only is it more of a, a mature sound for us, but like it is just a better display of what we can do. Like, there isn't a song on it that makes me go, oh, yeah, this is the same song we wrote before. Or, like, it's, it's really similar to this one. Like, it's, it's five songs, but each song is its own unique style. I was going to say that before, actually, too, that we're really good at writing diverse songs. You don't have, like, yeah. some bands, like, when they put out a record, <laughs> you have, like, a, like three or four songs that kind of sound pretty similar or have like a similar structure, which like ours do too. Maybe yeah. sometimes like there's definitely certain like techniques or yeah things that we use that are, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know what you call that. Like, uh, that we use pretty frequently or whatever, yeah. but formula. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, don't know, I'm just about it. <laughs> I was gonna say on that you just gotta end up going with what you want to go with because there are times where with certain bands yeah you're gonna you basically are gonna hear kind of like okay new album without you know exactly what you're gonna get oh, very yeah. similar sound yeah, what I'm just saying is like yeah like we like for like a batch of songs like you know granted we've only put out two EPs but like we tend to write songs that are very like diverse like a song like bring you down for example being like very I don't know, melodic and kind of like down tempo, a little bit slower, but then also you have songs that are a little bit more drivey, like Broken or uh, I Won't Fade Away, where it's like cut time and like yeah. you know, kind of upbeat or whatever. But Yeah, you're going to end up creating something that's more going to be, it's going to give a more dynamic personality of the band, but what's also going to do is it's going to give you a chance to really construct a live show that's really going to hit those different peaks and valleys in terms of energy that you want to provide to the crowd. Yeah, yeah for sure. oh, 100%. And that's one thing that I think has been a little bit lost, and I think that's going to be something that's going to be really discovered given uh, coming out of the pandemic with concerts, because there were times I'd see some live shows, I'm like, okay, you know, this is fine, but it's like there are some really weird placements of songs here. But it's just like, I've seen again, I've seen live shows where all of a sudden it was, you hit this certain drive and it's working well, and all of a sudden you get to a point where you're feeling like, 
this is awesome, but I need a break. And all of a sudden the band comes out like, okay, we're going to play two acoustic tracks where you're just like, yeah, this yeah. is a complete change up, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen that happen before. Cause mm-hmm. I was, I almost about passed out in the pit from just heat exhaustion. All of a sudden, yeah, we're going to play two acoustic songs for you. Thank God we all need this. And all of a sudden, okay, we've got three songs left. We're going to go hard as shit. Yeah, we're all ready. Let's go. So having that kind actually, of, the- um, like we've been working on new music now, actually, um, I think we have about like five or six like solid ideas. Ethan actually had like more of an acoustic song that you brought up like the last time I was yeah, over here. Yeah. That like we have a song on our first EP that's called City Lights and it's like more of an acoustic song. And people actually really love that song for some reason. I hate it, but I don't know. Like, um, but yeah, people dig it. Um, I think he and I wrote it when we were waiting for Jake yeah. and Jack to show up. That's, yeah, that's exactly it. what it was. Is yeah. we, were, we were waiting for Jake and Jack to show up. You started playing this chord progression. And you're like, yeah, like I think this could be a cool little acoustic yeah. song. I don't know what we would do with it. And I was like, oh, actually, hold up. I got some lyrics. <laughs> and we wrote the entire song in, what, an hour? Yeah, something like that. Like, just so happen to have, like, the <clears throat> lyrics that fit the melody yeah. for the type of song that it was is just, like, perfect. Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was like, stupid fast. How, yeah. Like, it, like it's that it's fun. rare that that happens, but when it does, it's yeah. just so nice. Oh, it absolutely people, is. People always request us to play live, but since it's, like, an acoustic song, we don't really... Yeah. We played it for, like, they they play it for encores and stuff. Yeah, like, or for, like, headlining shows, we'll throw it in the middle. Yeah. But typically, we're opening, so we don't have enough time to be like, oh, yeah, here's an acoustic song. But yeah, I but, would, like, what I was kind of getting at was, like, I would like to do that, like, a, a kind of a maybe controversial band to bring up right now, because everybody's been hating on their new record i love it same um a day to remember yeah. has always love been really good record. about like you know <laughs> like they can go fucking what's the beat down song on the new record bad La- friend. last chance or, or well la- last chance to last dance. chance to dance, yeah thank you. yeah parentheses so, like, bad friend yeah so like that song like goes in and it's like super heavy but then like i mean the rest of the record's really soft but like they can they've always kind of been that band that could go from like something kind of like drivey or heavier to like being, you know, like soft acoustic. Like, yeah, I think that, uh, <clears throat> that one with Sierra, what's that song that they have? That's still their biggest song. The acoustic. Oh song. yeah. Um, um, if it, it means, means a lot to you. If it means a lot to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause like when I saw it, Dana Remember, it, I was going to say when I saw Dana Remember play in Minneapolis back in October of 2019, it was like, yeah, that show was fun as all hell. Cause again, of course you got the high energy going in there. Plus they had the best, they had the best band to just like basically pump up the energy, open up for them, which was Beartooth. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, God, that was fucking great. Which, I wish, I wish they would have switched. I fail on Beartooth though, in terms of like placement, because Beartooth leading into a day remember would have been so much better in terms of the overall energy of the show. Oh, but looking yeah. at a day remember set of like, it was just crazy with how much energy was going on there. Then when they bring out the acoustic guitars and play, if it means a lot to you, again, they bring it out a little bit later in the set because yeah. it gives you that little bit of a break. The one I was talking about where it happened with me where I almost passed out was I was at Riot Fest in 2019 seeing Rise Against, and I was about to pass out because it was just so hot and humid. All of a sudden, here comes Tim with the acoustic guitar. They play Hero War and Swing Life Away. Everyone's just happy as all hell. Then we go into, like, I think it was, like, Give It All. Uh, we went into Prayer of the Refugee, and I can't remember what they, I can't remember, there was one other song in there, but it was like, you get that like perfect construction of an overall set list in there to where you're going crazy, energy's high, when you need that dip to let people recharge for the end, you need to know where it is, and you perfect, and they perfectly put it in there, like there's certain bands that can really do that, yeah, and yeah. I'll even use a day to remember his new record as well, when they go out on tour, yeah, it is a lot softer, personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of it for a couple other reasons that I, we could always talk about, but I don't want to really talk about it because I want to focus yeah. on Divide the Fall. But looking at like what they did with like um, Zong Only Money or Everything We Need, they could put something like that in there as well as kind of like that high energy, but then all of a sudden that dip to let people kind of recharge yeah. for the end, kind of something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like we try to do that best we can. Like obviously, like I said, we can't fit the acoustic song into a set most times because we're not headlining, but we still try to kind of do that with what we have. Yeah. When they played that that acoustic song as like an encore, it's usually just like a like a dirty clean channel or something, and like yeah. it's nice because like Jack and I will just like peace out, and just like head back to the merch table or something, and just let them 
like, do their do thing. It. And it's more like, I feel like it's more um, interactive that way too. Like if it's just kind of like a stripped down thing. Yeah. Dude, I remember when we played that at our first show, I almost cried while we were playing that song. Like, I had to, I had to stop, like, when there was an instrumental break, I had to, like, turn away from the crowd. I did play guitar at that time. Yeah, you did. I fucked up a lot. <laughs> but no, like, I, I remember, like, I had to turn away from the crowd and just be like, nope, I need a second, like, yeah, calm everybody down, lit it up. calm down. They yeah, had, like, their phones up. It was, it was nuts. Like, it was our first show, and people all, like, we had probably, like, 70 or 80 people show up yeah, for our like first show. Yeah, for our first show ever, we're headlining it, and, like, everyone, like, we, we pull out the acoustic guitar and play the acoustic song kind of midway through the set, and, like, everyone's got their phones out and shit, they're singing along to the, because it's got, like, some woes in it, and really easy to follow along, and people are singing along to it, I was like, holy shit, like, this is insane. Yeah. Like, first show ever. Like, I had to turn around and just, like, look at the back of the stage for a second to keep my composure. That's going to be something you're going to remember forever as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then kind of bringing this back kind of more of the, that full circle kind of feel. Because we were talking about earlier with you guys um, getting on lot, like getting on this potential longer tour once COVID, uh, like, kind of the whole entire thing breaks. Yeah. Again, with with the diversity you have now in your music, you're able to build off of that and really create this certain set list where, of course, there you're not going to be the one uh, headlining this. You're going to be more on the opener side of this. So yeah. you're going to have a set amount of time you have to work with. But what you're going to have to remember, too, is what can you do with that set amount of time to make sure that when people <laughs> leave that show and people go home and then people say go to work next day, talk to their friends the next day, whatever it is you're the band they're thinking of because yeah. I'll put it this, they're going to be thinking of the headliner too. Cause that's probably what they came for. But when it yeah. comes to like, was there another band that was on the bill that just stood out? Like they, you want to make sure that you have something in there that's going to make them remember you, whether it's the set list construction where you're going to end up, you know, potentially like I've seen sometimes completely melt your freaking face off and potentially, you know, try and destroy something like me in the pit where I just remember that forever. Or if you're going to create this certain vibe, this certain feel, this certain mood, with your tra- with your set list with your tracks that just is gonna hit somebody and hit the audience kind of like right in the heart and make them feel something they haven't felt before. Really understanding that kind of construction within a set list and how you want to make people feel with your live shows. In terms, if you get on that, if that tour ends up running, you could be one of the most impactful. You could be the most impactful band on that tour. It could easily happen. You could be the one that people are going to be talking about when they leave, when they go home, when they go to work the next day, when they're online, whether they're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if they're the younger generation on the good old TikTok, even though I sound really old saying on the good old TikTok because, well, I'm too old for that shit. Eh, I'm old. Okay, give me the cane. But it's just Dude, we people just started gonna... the TikTok and I, we have no idea what we're doing. With yeah, this. No, not a clue. Yeah. It's totally understandable. But where I was going with that is, you want it's like you're gonna have a chance to be able with your diversity in your musical stylings to create something with that set list, given however much time that you're gonna have to create something that people are gonna remember, go home and talk about the next day. Yeah, and I think like now that we officially have Dead Memories out, we have two songs specifically for me anyway that come to mind that we can use as an opener and a closer. Which one? I won't fade away and fake love. Yeah, I feel like the I feel like I won't fade away would be the opener. Yep, fake and fake love would be the closer. A hundred percent. I was. Yep. We haven't, we haven't actually talked about this yet, but I think. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Have you listened to like our our newest EP? Um, yeah. So we have a song called "Broken," which is like the last track. I actually think that could be like a cool second track. Oh yeah, because it just yeah. goes right in. Yeah. Or whatever, and it's kind of drivey or whatever. So, like, if we started with, like, I Won't Fade Away and then went into, like, Broken. Yeah, like, Broken, cool. then Darker Side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like, I, even, yeah. even just those five songs, because that's probably, like, that those five songs are probably, like, all we'll have time for when we end up doing, like, a, like yeah. an opening set. Yeah, we might be able to get, like, one or two more. And yeah. If, but, if that, but, yeah. <laughs> I will say I will say this though. If you're gonna close with fake love, I think one of the biggest things you could do to really help you out to really drive home the, the impact that that song has is 
just give like the quickest little synopsis that you can before the song about what the song is about and then the title yeah. of the song because what's going to happen is again how many people are going to be able to relate to that oh, yeah, you, you sure. say something about that it's going to trigger something in people's brains and they're going to follow along with the music and how that kind of progresses through that feeling then you get to the bridge and the breakdown that breakdown goes heavy it's going to be the perfect way to kind of just have people have that idea in their minds of what the song is about and then just to drive it home with that yeah it might even be cool too to like extend that like part out before like the drop oh, where yeah. like Ethan just tell, like tells the crowd like hey this part goes in like are let's you guys, go like are you guys fucking ready I don't think you're ready and then, like, you <laughs> just go like this fuck your fake love done with me now you're wrong to the next that'd one that'd be tight <laughs> it's got the perfect ending too just that da 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 lights drop yeah just oh, like, oh. <laughs> see we haven't played a show in a while so we've chef's been, like, kiss yeah, we haven't talked about this. Or... Oh. Yeah, but, but but it's it, it's going to be a time where you're going to have to talk about this. So kind of already start getting those ideas running. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my god, I miss playing shows so much. Well, guys, I'll put it. We'll say that is the one thing that we probably it's probably like one of the next investments that our band needs to do is like to look into some sort of like at least like minimal like lighting. I yeah. feel like. I feel like lighting adds a lot to like a live performance. Oh, like yeah. um, even even this band called Rivals, have you ever heard of them? Yes. Um, so I saw them like it was probably like early twenty nineteen. Um, they came through Minneapolis and they only had like I wanna say it was like maybe four or five like lighting stands or whatever, but they were programmed like via MIDI so that it triggered different uh, lighting sequences to happen at certain times. And I just thought that was like so cool. It added a lot to their like live show. But well, especially if they, if you end with fake fake love and you end with the ending on it, and then having some sort of lighting that you can just like drop at the end of it. Yeah, I mean that's going to be somewhere you kind of give that finale feel to it off of that, yeah, where it's sure. it gives the finale feeling, but it's not like super grand. It's just going to hit them quick. Like it's going to be something that's like holy shit, what the hell just happened? It's going to have that kind yeah. of a feeling to it. Oh God! I just want to be on a stage. <laughs> just amp you guys <laughs> up to play live. We only got to play fake love like a um, couple four of times. Times. No, times. No, six. Oh, was it? Yeah, because we I played the we the four shows with the archers and then two with the failsafe. Oh, that's right. Six okay. shows. It wasn't released yet at that point. No, though. no, yeah. it wasn't. So it was just like a track that nobody knew. So it was like because <sighs> keep in mind like we were touring on like that first EP for a while, so we had started like introducing. Like some unreleased songs, just like playing them yeah. in the set. So fake love, I think in the last like couple of tours we did, we started playing that, uh, started playing that song, and the like, people yeah. loved it. But yeah, they didn't know it, like they couldn't like resonate resonate with it like as well as they can now. Yeah, that they've, like been able. To <laughs> and when Matt says we were touring on the first EP for a while, we were touring on the first the yeah. uh, words. <laughs> yep. Cool. We're uh, we were touring on the first EP for like two years. Yeah. That's a, that's well, a long time. But then again, you take a look at some of these bigger bands as well. I mean, they tour on albums for two or three years. At, oh, at yeah. Some point. Yeah. I mean, the typical album cycle is about two to three years. And especially when you're a smaller band and you're constantly going to places that you've never played before. The reality is you can tour on one EP or one album for four or five years before people really know the difference. Yeah. Granted, right, like, you don't necessarily want to do that, but you can. So... Because it's still, like, new to people that, yeah. you know, are in those new markets that you're you know, promoting into. I think that's probably why we we did tour oh, on it for so long. Yeah. Was because, like, we... We're, not only we're just, like, playing in the Midwest, like, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Iowa, you know, but, like, then we had a whole new wave of people, like, where we started playing in other areas of the country. Yeah. That, well, and even within those states, we were constantly playing new cities. Yeah. So it was always people that had never heard of us before or, you know, came for another band and, you know, we were on the bill or, you know, had heard of us but had never seen us before and... You know, see, especially with the point that we were at and, and still kind of are at right now, you can tour on the same seven, eight songs for a while, but as a member of the band, it gets real old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly, like, 
we released that second EP more for us than we did for anyone else. <laughs> we were like, so we had a, we have a different manager now, but at the time when COVID first started, we had a different manager and like, we were kind of like going back and forth. Cause like, granted he was, he was smart about it. He was like, you yeah. guys really should wait. Like, I feel like if it was still his way, we wouldn't have released we it. We wouldn't have released it at all. But, um, you know, we just kept like, kind of saying like man you know even though COVID's like happening and we can't play shows i feel like we owe it to like our fans or people that even like follow us like we need to put out something new because right now like we only have these this one ep these five songs yeah or six songs we have like a, a cover yeah. out there too um like these few songs or whatever out there that like people are they got to be getting sick of too you know what i mean like they they love our band but like they want something more you know, so it's like we eventually like kind of had to like come to terms with the fact that we're not going to be able to do an EP release tour or EP release show. Yeah. But um, at least we'll just kind of put it out there. And that's why I'm kind of curious to see like, you know, we're working on new music now and we have like quite a few like ideas in the bag. But I'm wondering how long we'll end up like touring on Dead Memories because of the fact that like there's been a whole year. Well, I guess we did release it in the fall of 2020. So, but there's, you know, been like a whole year of shows that like we didn't get to play. So it's like, will we just end up like uh, touring on it, you know, for a couple more years before we put out something new. I think we really want to like take our time to, to like yeah. do the third release, whatever it ends up being uh, to, you know, I guess like try to push it to like labels or, or, um, you know, I guess try to uh, make it like our biggest release yet or whatever. You always want the next release to be the biggest one, but. Oh, it's, it's totally understandable. And when it comes to that manager that you guys had that want to, you know, delay it, I can, I can see why bands want to delay this stuff. Cause you know, you want to tour with it. You want to go out and perform it in front of people. But with COVID, you didn't know how long this thing was going to last. And yeah. I think releasing it in the fall of 2020 when you guys did is going to actually be a smarter move in the long run. Here's why. Yeah. So say you hadn't released it yet and you're waiting for you know a chance to be able to tour, go out and play this stuff, and then you're going to be able to release stuff. That's cool because I only understand the business side of it, but you got to also think. That's what everybody else is doing. Because yeah. once touring resumes, how many new albums are we going to get to see dropped? I mean, new EPs dropped every single oh, sure. Friday. Oh, yeah. Are you it's even gonna... seeing it now? Like, yeah, you're seeing dropping like their new albums like beginning of 2020 because it's like everybody. I feel like kind of is preemptively getting ready for like by the end of the year. Like it's all things yeah because because in march it was absolutely ridiculous with the album drop we had on march 19th we're having on march 26th you take a look at uh april april 16th is just freaking insane like yeah while, while she sleeps you've got uh shoot who else is it uh escape the fate you kind of go into june as well all of a sudden like the beginning of june you get rise against and you get afi in there as well at the back end of it you're gonna get bear tooth so there's gonna be so and then also there's a lot of bands that have been working on stuff that said's going to come out in 2021. We'd have no idea when it's going to happen. That's going to be pushed till later on in the year. So what happens if all of a sudden you guys sat on this EP till like August or September of 2021 and finally get able to go out and play shows? That's great and all, but a lot of people that like a lot of these other bands as well, when they're dropping new stuff, yours guys' and stuff could have potentially gotten left behind due to the fact that there's so much more to sift through. Oh, sure. If yeah, you release like it. saturated or something. Yeah. Like too yeah. many new releases. Yeah. yeah. However, October 2020, point, I'll say in 2020, October 2020 did have a lot of good stuff that was released at that time as well. But for what I thought was, if you released it, it like not that first weekend in October 2020, I'm not sure exactly when you guys released that EP. So I, I got October 23rd. Okay, because here's how I go with this. That, 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 that first weekend in October 2020, that's when we had the Corey Taylor solo record. So, of course, any publication, especially Loudwire, was going to be all over it. So, people were going to be knowing that it was going to come out. Then, all of a sudden, at the back end of the month on the 30th, we had, like, Moss to Flames. And then the absolute insane that was post-human survival horror by Bring Me the Horizon. Oh, yeah. But in between oh, okay. there, I, like, I'm like trying to think of, like, and I know there was a good amount of albums that dropped in there. I think on the same week that you guys dropped, I think Seven Dust might have dropped theirs at the, on the 23rd. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, same, same day. Same, yeah, same, same day. day. I yep. think yeah. Saul dropped yeah. their debut album as well so it's just like i totally understand of course october is always a huge month for album releases from what i remember but it's just somewhere 
if you guys would have waited another year, holy shit, you guys would have potentially gotten left in the dust due to the fact of how much was going to be out there. It was going to be oversaturated to the point where you yeah. need to have this gigantic hold over the musical market in order to basically stand out in that. Because all of a sudden, yeah. what happens if like Metallica would have just say, oh, we're going to drop a new record yeah. on the same day you guys are planning on dropping this EP? It would have been just kind of lost at that point. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what we've actually talked about, too, because like like I said, with our next release, whatever it ends up being, full album or EP, um, we'll most likely end up doing another EP because I guess I feel like for a, an unsigned band, you know, like, yeah. it's more beneficial uh, to, to do only like five songs. And not only that, like you can market each of the five like more individually than you can like yeah. a full record. Well, the music industry doesn't care about albums anymore either. Yeah. Like, yeah, with with, stream, with streaming, how prevalent is it? it's it's mostly all singles and then a couple of song EPs. Like I know Mice and Men is doing three that's EPs this year. That's actually what we've been like talking about is like you know like getting maybe like and I'm not saying anything for certain because I don't want people to listen to this later to be like oh, you said this but it's going this. or whatever. But like because I'm sure like I I know I'm gonna post this in like our Facebook group and then like, people will listen to it. Oh, I'm gonna post it there too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. uh like, you know, we've talked about, like, maybe uh, getting, like, you know, five to ten songs ready and then releasing, like, three or four of them as, like, singles. Just singles that will never end up being on, like, an album or anything. Just, like, to kind of keep tying us over until that, like, five to seven song, like, EP, album, whatever yeah. it is, like, ends up being ready to, like, be released you know if it's with a label awesome if it's not whatever you know? and when it comes to the rock and metal scene there are not a lot of bands that are really doing that whereas you take a look at more of the hip-hop and pop yep. scene there's a lot of people doing that because that's what the because with streaming that's where the listenership is yeah. the one band that stands out in my mind that's basically been doing the whole single thing for a little bit now and has worked out tremendously for them is falling in reverse oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's the one that stands out so what i'm saying in that is there is sort of a precedent there that's set where this can potentially work out rather oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's all going to depend upon... I mean, don't get me wrong, like people, it. from a music listener standpoint, people enjoy getting at least like a batch of songs at a time. Oh, yeah. Like the individual singles. There are people, like, I remember, like, in between our first EP and when we released Dead Memories, we released... We released I Won't Fade Away as a single like a year before Dead yeah. Memories ended up even coming out. Oh, so um, it was a year before we even released the next single from Dead Memories. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right, actually. So we released Bring You Down and then Fake Love as like two additional singles. But it's like those individual songs are like not a lot to like type. Everything's still like content Yeah. related. Like people... You know, like you listen to a song a couple times, like, cool, what else you got for yep. me? You know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's more content. Short. It's more yeah. content driven. It's, it's less, when it comes to streaming service, it's less experience driven. And I've had this conversation with many different bands at this point where it's like, okay, people are listening, like, when it comes to streaming services, you can listen to a single. And if you don't like in the first 10 seconds, you can always like just go on to the next one where it's like, for me, if I'm going to, if I'm listening to something, it's like, and I'm going to, you know, still download it on iTunes or something like that. If I'm going to buy the physical vinyl of it, because I still do that. Cause I think it's fun to listen to stuff on vinyl. You have an investment in that now. So yep. you're going to listen to it more and more. You're going to actually take time to really listen through the whole entire track list from cover to cover and really understand the album a little bit more. You're going to have that investment in there with streaming services. You don't have that investment anymore so i do understand the point when it comes to releasing singles and why that's going to be more popular going into the future unless something changes but at the moment right now there really is no sight of that due to how streaming services operate yeah 100 percent. i mean i don't know you know what you listen to or, or how much you listen to like pop or anything like that but um love is kind of the perfect example of that he released he's got two full records out now but the first record specifically he released what probably 10 singles yeah, yeah. like 10 singles over the course of a year and a half two years and then released a full album and the album was the singles and then maybe a couple other songs like that that was it 
But at that point, people were so ready to have an album from him that they were like, oh, great. Like, all of his singles are in one place. Yeah. And he got a stupid amount of streams on that album because people were just ready for it to be all in one spot instead of having to click between singles. <laughs> well, Ethan, and, I'll put it this way. How much I listen to pop music, I, I'll put it this way. I have no idea who you're talking about right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, so, I'm so ingrained with rock and metal and the subgenres that go off of it that it's... It's again, it's I'm not putting anything against pop music or hip hop or country or anything because while I don't like those genres, I know a lot of people do like those genres. Again, people connect with music in many different ways where how I connect with metalcore might be the same way someone connects with pop. It's just that way. So it's totally understandable. But then again, it's you're seeing what's going on with more of the popular scene right now in terms of pop music and how that was done. And seeing how kind of that worked. Again, it's all depending upon how the listener and how the fan is consuming the music. And if they're going to be consuming on streaming services, you kind of got to tailor it in a little way to that sort of platform. There's a lot of bands out there that are going to continue the album thing as well, which I do really enjoy because listening to certain albums that have come out in 2021, going from cover to cover is so much better than just oh, yeah. listening to it one bit and piece at a time. Going for like I'll go going from cover cover just makes the album so much better. Sometimes it doesn't make it better. Sometimes it's like, what are you guys thinking? But it's an experience worth taking on. Yeah, I I 100% agree. Like, my preference is absolutely, you know, a couple singles than a full album. It's just unfortunately like we reached a point where that's not the way that the majority of people consume music anymore. Yeah. You know, it's if if you don't adapt, you die. That's pretty much the best way to put it. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Bear grills, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had to put that in there. Well, guys, I remember at the beginning of the podcast or in our little like intro thing before we started recording, I said it to expect to take like an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah, we're almost at the two hour mark right now. <laughs> oh shit, we just go on some what? tangents too. You oh can, yeah, you can we always some do. Of this out. Oh, you think I'm gonna edit any of this out? Hell no! I'm keeping this on there. It's it's just if if I'm enjoying the conversation so much and just keep driving forward, I'm like I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. However, there's gonna come a point where this conversation is gonna have to come to a close for now. I'm gonna say for now because you'll see what I mean by that when I go through my whole entire outro thing. So, Jake, Matt, and Ethan, this is the time at the end of the podcast where I like to give you guys a chance to say whatever the heck you want, plug whatever the heck you want before we close this out so guys the floor is yours all right um i guess all we have to say is uh go check us out on all of our socials we're on facebook instagram uh we have a twitter that we're working on using more uh we also have a tiktok that we're working on using more but <laughs> we're we're old for tiktok so we'll see um but yeah go follow us on all of our socials check out our videos on youtube uh check us out on spotify uh divide the fall.com uh, you can find our merch there. Uh, please buy merch. If you ever want to support a local band, buying merch is the way to do it because uh, all that money goes back to us. It doesn't get split with anyone else. So if you want to support us, uh, go to all those places. Check us out. We hope you like our music. If you haven't listened to it yet, if you have and you like us, thank you. If you have and you don't like us, thank you for at least giving us a chance. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I know we're all sick of COVID, but please keep taking precautions. Stay safe. Get a vaccine. We want to play shows again. Like that, That's it. We just want to play shows again. Like, yeah. Well said, sir. All right. Hi, nice. Mom. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Matt says hi, Mom. <laughs> hi, Mom. <laughs> well done. All right. Now it's my turn to close this out. So I was going to close this out with three things. First thing is. When Ethan was telling you guys where to find Divide the Fall, where to find them online, social media wise, YouTube wise, where to find them on their website, buy their merch, stream their music. You guys know what I always do in this instance. Instead of you guys having to search this stuff up and go to all these different sites, I want you to take a look at the description of the podcast. Whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify, Podcast, Google Play, or iHeartRadio, there's going to be a little thing in the description that says find Divide the Fall online with labels and links to everything that's there. So I'm making it a one-stop shop. It's easy. Click, bing, bang, bang, bing, bang, bong, whatever I was going to say. Go over to it. My bad. Okay, first first mess up on the podcast coming two hours in. I'm going to take that as a win. So bing, bang, boom. <laughs> there we go. You're able to follow these guys. You're able to listen to their music, stream their stuff. Follow them on Spotify. Um, if you're listening to Apple Music, follow them there as well. Follow them on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe to their YouTube channel. 
uh, go to their website, buy some merch. And if you're thinking, wait, should I buy some merch? If you're watching the YouTube video, look at the shirt that I'm wearing right now. I bought merch from these guys before we had them on the podcast. So, you know, it's good stuff. We even have a new merch sale going on right now, like brand new designs. So go check it out. Go check it out. And I was now, say, by the time this airs, it'll probably be over. But well, yeah, whatever. If it's not over, then go check it out. There'll yeah. probably still be yeah. stock left over. So yeah. go buy che- it. Just you know? check it out anyway. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Either way. Okay. All right. Time for my number two thing, and this is coming where I'm like, we're gonna close this conversation for now because this isn't the last time I wanna ever talk to you guys or see you guys because whenever I have bands in the podcast that I absolutely enjoy, which has been pretty much like 99 to hundred percent of the bands that I've had on the podcast, I always make a singular promise and I'm going to extend the promise to you guys as well. This is not an if this is not an if this is a when this is a when I get to see you guys play live for the first time. I think you guys are going to enjoy this first rounds on me. I'll take uh-huh. it. I'm not going <laughs> to complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would. So, of course, on that instance, then we're going to, uh, we got a promise to see you guys play live. First round's on me. Promise to see each other again, talk to each other again. I'd love to have you guys on the podcast again in the future. So, in all good conscience, I cannot end this podcast with goodbye. So, Jake, Matt, Ethan of Divide the Fall, I got to end this with the best thing I can think of. See you later. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, see you, man. Well, well, folks, that's my interview with the guys from Divide the Fall, Matt, Jake, and Ethan. Unfortunately, their drummer, Jack, was not able to make it, but we like him anyway. So when it comes to Divide the Fall, when it comes to finding their latest EP, again, if you're watching the video, the EP has been in the bottom of the video the whole entire time. It says check it out right after this episode. So now it's time to go check it out. If you look at the description of the podcast, whether you're watching on YouTube, you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, it is going to be there with Find Divide the Fall online. Follow them on their socials, subscribe to their stuff, follow them and listen to them on the streaming services, go to their website, pick up some merch like I did, and really get behind this band because we're going to see some big things from them coming up once everything resumes. And on that note, that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Chord Progression Podcast. Where you want to see rocks or rock and metal thrive. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I am every single one of the big, healthy, and hearty. See you